Hello to the internet. How's it going? I am currently watching... Um... Uh... Oh my god, why is my brain already uh, derping out? Uh... The super edit of the big raid stream. So how long were we playing? Like 12 hours on that day or something? It's a one hour video. Dog did really well with it. It's awesome. So there's two videos going up today. One is the super edit. The other is something I'm currently rending, rendering, which is the, an AFC. Uh, the render for the AFC is taking ages, and I don't know why. There's something about the way I'm trying to produce it that's supposed to be time efficient. It's not working technologically. So, kind of frustrating, but hey, we'll get through it. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, so uh, back to the stream here. I've just been reviewing a little bit of Game of the Day stuff. Um... Yeah, uh, I don't know. No, there's no massive, waffly, long intro. If anyone's got any specific question or wants my attention right here, right now, I, I'll, I'll indulge and we'll respond. But uh, yeah, we're just going to get back in game. We're going to keep playing the story and see how we go. It's good to see you also. May Sophia, uh, Bacon's All Mine, MMO Shards, Tinfoil Man, Rachi, Kairos, Columbina, Walls and Makari. Um... Bacon's all mine. Oh, I already read you, Bacon. You got in there twice. Cotton Clo, Chlo, Lissa V, Ben, Ben Lubar, Landinet, Lanadet, I should say the DLA. Flag, it's good to see you. Uh, and and we gay. Oh, at JMD House, it's good to see everybody. Lots of familiar names there. Hope everybody's had a nice weekend. Oh, I'm sorry to reveal that the weekend is now over and we're on Monday already. It feels like Sunday because obviously I never did a full stream on Saturday. This week's flown by for me, truly flown by. It's weird because, um, you know, we did the big raid stream and then a week till Tuesday. And now it's almost been another week. I can't believe it was half a month ago now. Or did you think about that? Just one day and it was half a month ago. I mean, what has happened the second half of this month? I've got no idea. Um... But yeah, anyway, so I uh, hope you're all doing good. Apotholis, Enzax, good evening. Imagine a so so Ben says, imagine a solid ocean fractal challenge moat where the boss can be stunned, attacks slower, and applies pulsing Aegis to players. Okay, so <laughs> the Aegis on players means basically... Wait, no, I don't I don't get it. What are you talking about? Does Aegis block the thing so you can't charge your crystals? A solid ocean, uh when it, why does the Jade more attacking slower? So basically it's just gonna take a million years to kill him, because he does his laser beam really slowly, a lot of them get blocked, and then um what does the stun do though? Nobody's going to stun him, right? That, that sounds like a hilarious challenge mode in that it sounds like it makes it easier, but actually makes it much slower and more annoying. Um, it's official spook month. Yes, it's now Halloween. I had a terrifying nightmare last night. A truly terror. I haven't had a nightmare that bad for a long time. I was actually creeping around my... I woke up at midnight as well, right? Which was creepy. I was sneaking around my house like a little boy. Um... You know, scared of the monsters. I had that scary of a, of a nightmare. It was really weird. Not only season five is season one, but it's also a Corteria overhaul. And that's why they sneakily had people consume their tones of knowledge for sigils of nullification. So that people would enjoy Corteria fully with higher quality. That's a very cool add-on there, MMO Shards. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to go that crazy down the deep end. But that's a cool idea. I really, I don't know, season five is season one. I even talked about it on today. You guys haven't seen it. The AFC. Let me just put something forward. You know Blish? That technology with Blish wandering around as an actual ally of ours. An NPC that can move that other people don't recognize as the same NPC. Where else might that be really useful, guys? Where else might the devs utilize that tech the devs were talking about on the AFC? Well, the Tower of Nightmares, right? Hallucinations. Eh? Eh? It's a good, good little bit of hallucination tech right there. So they're totally reusing it because season five is season one. And uh, they had a question <clears throat> about Timey's degenerative disease, um, which, not spoiling on this stream, will be a uh, something we talk about this patch again. But the, the, the degenerative disease was raised this patch. And there was a, a question on the AFC where someone said, hey, I really I didn't play season one. I don't know what this is. What's going on? And, uh, you know, uh, it's a ve perfectly valid question. How severe is the disease? What's the minutia of it? Blah, blah, blah. 
And how did the devs respond? They didn't. Ooh. Oh, they didn't, guys. They didn't. They ignored it, even though it's a very valid question. Why didn't they talk about it? Because it is season one stuff. And they are ordered by the two mics <laughs> to be silent on all matters of season one right now. Because uh, they can't afford leaking anything because season five is season one. So, um, were hallucinations ever NPCs? I don't really remember how it worked. The, the hallucinations even appeared in POF or was worth the aboggers, like create like spider illusions and stuff when you um get hit by them. But yeah, like a lot more long term one, I don't know. They could do that blish tech. It's two AM and I'm doing my assignment. Thank God you started streaming so I can have a decent night unless your soothing voice lulls me to sleep. You're doing your assignment. What uh assignment is that, Cal P? Um yeah, the double mic dream team. Hey, Tulip, it's good to see you. Anyway, yeah, so there you go, guys. I will, uh, I'll kick off the stream with an intro. I'll let people on Discord and stuff know we're going live. Uh, go get your drinks. I'm really thirsty today. Um, so yeah, I think I'll do do with that, and I'll see you all in a second.
All right, I'm back. Hello. Yeah, really didn't take too long on that one. <coughs> All right, what we got here? Um, yeah, we're hallucinating. Oh, there's really not too much chit chat. I guess it's a slow Monday. The anomalous visions. Uh, what for Blish technology? Sure, but I mean that's not necessarily a season one thing. That was only one Elder Dragon dead there. We didn't have too much of that. Uh, the Casimir and Marjorie hallucinations during the Tower of Nightmares countdown. Well, the idea is as well, for what it's worth, that it's open world stuff. Tower of Nightmares, I would actually look at as a release that was very good for including a lot of story in the open world and starting to finally bring stuff forward a bit, as Living World Season 1 was trying to iterate on and do a lot. But yeah. Uh, Beta Ace. Hey, WP. I was just watching your VOD from yesterday. And cracked up at the thought of you putting your hands together watching the VA interviews, waiting for Steve Bloom to say something wrong about Ritlock. I imagined you as the critic from Ratatouille. Haha, <laughs> watching Guild Wars videos in a pitch black room with a notepad of all the uh, things wrong. He said, yeah, you're damn right. I wanted to criticize him. L listen, in many ways, the work of a critic is easy. We risk very little, yet enjoy a position over those who offer up their work and their selves to our judgment. We thrive on negative criticism, which is fun to write and to read and to say. But the bitter truth we critics must face is that in the grand scheme of things, the average piece of junk is more meaningful than our criticism designating it so. But there are times when a critic truly risks something, and that is in the discovery of the new. Last night, I experienced something new. An extraordinary voice acting video from a singularly unexpected source. To say that both the meal and its maker have challenged my... Oh, no, I read it wrong. To say that the video and the voice actor have challenged my preconceptions is a gross understatement. They ha he rocked me to my core. In the past, I've made no secret of my disdain for these voice actors working on Guild Wars 2. But I realize only now that I truly understand what they do. Not everyone can become a great voice actor, but a great voice actor can come from anywhere. It is difficult to imagine more humble origins than those of the genius now voicing Ritlock Brimstone, who is, in this critic's opinion, nothing less than the finest voice actor in gaming. I will be returning to these videos soon. Hungry for more. <laughs> Uh, I love Anton Ego. He's the best, man. <laughs> uh, it's such a good scene. If you haven't seen it, you need to... That's the best Pixar movie. It's the number one. I'm telling you now. What about when we get in the trippy area? The, the, uh, those are not hallucinations. No, no, no. Uh, what, what? There seems to be some misunderstanding as to what we're talking about. I'm just saying it's a new tech that they can use for something like that. Uh, uh, an entity we see but no one else does. Right now, the whole Blish is a prairie dog to everyone else thing is kind of swept under the rug. But to uh, unite this system with a hallucinatory idea is is worth something. You know, They can actually dive into why it's different for me as it is to other people, you know? Um, hey, I'll be our Spears. Taz, it's good to see you. You missed the pre-show convo. There wasn't too much of one. Do you think season five will bring another mount? And what do you, and do you think it will be underwater? Um, I think we might even get another season four mount. Didn't, um, uh, Mike Z basically hint or suggest that? Am I not? Am I? Am I wrong about that? I, I, I feel like in the interviews they suggested there'd be another mount even this season. Uh, and I would definitely think of one in season five too. What it is in season five, I don't know. Until we, uh, until we learn the nature of season five, I'm not sure we can make any predictions. Um, in truth, if season five is season one, if we're going to keep banging on about this silly idea, if season five is season one, you might not see a mount at all there because, um, you know, that's like core content. It's not POF content, and mounts are a, P uh, a POF feature. Or the devs could do something really kind of weird, which is if you are a POF owning account, you retroactively do get a mount even for some core content, which would be season one. So, but that would be weird. Um, so I don't know, really. Uh, and, and even beyond like that kind of stuff, you've got to think about, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be season one. If season five is season five, but it's, you know, all over Corteria and we're just flitting around doing stuff wherever... Um, it, will it still be locked behind POF accounts? Uh, I mean, thematically, you've got all these other stories and, and sort of questions to start dealing with. Uh, 
where are we in the world? If we're in the Blood Legion homelands, then maybe we're dealing with siege devourers as mounts, you know? Or some kind of large devourer. They seem to... If you actually look at the selection of mounts we've got right now, the, the big raptor, the springer, the skimmer, the jackal, the griffin, the roller beetle... The Roller Beetle is the only one, really, that has some precedent in Guild Wars 1. The only one. Uh, and bizarrely, it, it's it's come from a release that had very little to do with them, really. I mean, the Rock Beetle is wearing Alona, so you can kind of tie up. But, like, um, what, what I'm trying to express to you all is the odds of it being Guild Wars 1 speculation we can do. Or, you know, existing lore speculation, even. It's not about Guild Wars 1. The Springer, the Skimmer, the Raptor, all these things. There's no precedent for any of them in Guild Wars 2 before, except the Raptor, which we saw Mordrum riding, right? Uh, for all I know, we could have just a regular beetle we ride on, because that's what Hecate, uh, sorry, Hyluk were running around on in, like, Season 2, remember? In the uh, Silver Waste, the Far Silver, Silver Waste. So, like, I don't know. I don't know they could do anything. Uh, as to the bit, is it underwater? I'd like the idea of... Of like a jet ski kind of emulator. Because they're basically vehicles, right? Let's be honest with, about this. They're basically vehicles. Guild Wars could completely reskin itself into a sci-fi product right now. And most of its systems would still work, you know? It's just that instead of them being mounts and living, breathing things, it would be a motorbike we're on instead of a raptor, right? And when we do our special action thing, we're rearing up to do a wheelie and charging forwards, right? Like, it's, it's basically the same thing. Um... Blow everyone's mind and bring out a horse mount. A horse mount could definitely be one of those things where it's like, um, it appeals to people outside of Guild Wars. Oh, okay. So, Flag, you want to draw the lottery winners? Can you remind me how we do that? Because it's obviously it's been a long time. Uh, yeah, so we're going to do the, live the lottery giveaway here. And since it's already closed, Flag, and we can't encourage more people to get in, shall we just do it right now? Just get it done. Uh, the other thing I want to do is some Spud 2 upgrades, which I'm going to log in game net right now as I, as I speak. I'm logging in. Um, so uh, we, can, uh, we can go check that out. And we can do those. And then, yeah, I should be caught up with what the GMs and stuff want for today. Um, yeah. Tulip says, I've now crawled under a blanket. Hopefully I don't suddenly fall asleep during the stream. Oh, uh, you're going to get that weird thing. Does anyone else get this, right? But when you're really sleepy and you like start closing your eyes, but you're trying to stay awake or you're listening to the radio or you're doing whatever, everyone's voices start sounding like, I don't want to say louder, but clearer. And just like, there's a very strange, like almost emotion or sensation that you just start getting like, purely through your ears, like, how the world sounds when you're on the cusp of sleeping. I used to get that all the time, like, at college and even at school when you're really tired and falling asleep at the desk. That Like, the teacher's voice starts sounding really weird, everyone around you. Yeah, look, some people know what I'm talking about. What's the... Is there a name for that? Is there an actual, in English, a description for that phenomenon? Because that's a really weird one. I might be giving that to Tulip here on the stream. You know, my voice is going to start getting really odd. Going to come into focus in a weird way. You're going to dream about me, Tulip. You're going to dream about... All right, all right, all right. We're going in game. Uh, so I should give you guys something to watch here. <clears throat> you got spicy tomato soup and garlic bread. I had a pretzel today. I actually had a couple of pretzels. And they were very nice. Let me see here. Let's scroll this down. Beauty. Beauty. Okay. Uh, what's going on here? Oh, have I not logged? Oh, yeah, because I did Game of the Day footage from before. Um, oh, I've got to change region as well to NA because you guys are going to want to uh, have the opportunity to play with me. That's fine. Let me just do the guild thing first. God, our frames are so low. Uh, let's go Spud 2. And we'll just quickly nip this in. Uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in joining these, uh, we uh, have oriented ourselves into lots of space here, so you are welcome. Uh, all you have to do is come uh, to Discord. Instructions are there. Let me close that down. <clears throat> right, okay. So, which building is it? They actually had a very specific request as to what building they want. So, let me have a look at this. Um, do, 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 do. Planning, upgrades... All right, so mining rate two, it's such a waste. Uh, I'm gonna do plant ore and leather. 
Okay, so plant ore and leather are going to be what? The mark? No, no, no. They're the workshop, aren't they? Let's go to the workshop and see what we've got there. Because there'll be synthesizers. Sorry, chat's starting to move a bit quick and I'm not really looking at it just yet. Let me have a look here. Uh, hello. Hey, Do hey, Crazy Ryulu. It's good to see you. It's nice to see Mozzie Me using some Guild Wars 1 icons still here. Um... Why, after all these years, do you not have a gem store mini potato for 240 to 400 gems? Uh, I've already got uh, an item in game. I don't. I'd love a potato. I would really. What? That looks like the mini rock or something. That'd be kind of hype. But uh, you know, I don't really push for that kind of stuff. Okay, let's see. So Kenji Arrow Soul. Seek the peace of the sky above the sky. I love that reference to the sky above the sky, man. Oh, that's so cool. The sky above the sky. All right, okay. Uh, or synthesizer adds silver as a possible output from the workshops or synthesizer. Good job, Spud2. You've got 200 silver or 200 iron, uh, uh, amethyst, carnelian, lapis, peridot, spinal, sunstone, topaz, and ecto. All together. Ooh, seems to have bugged. Let's try that again. Oh, okay. Oh god, have I lagged out? Have I lagged out here? No, I've not lagged out. I can still get in and out. What's going on? Weird, all right, I guess I'll look at chat for a second. Uh, pff, another mount two or three episodes later. That's pretty insane. Well, think about it, Ben. Um, POF releases five mounts. Well, the Guild Hall systems are just dying. Is in-game chat working? Test? Yeah, it's working. Um, if you think about it, POF released five mounts. Three episodes later, we get a beetle. Three episodes later, we could get something else. Three episodes later, we could get something else. I, 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 mean, I, I really think that. I think the finale could have a mount, you know? Uh, and obviously, if we're talking about a season four finale mount, if there's going to be six episodes, we're looking at Aureen, aren't we? Right? Um, but that's such a weird idea. I don't like that idea. What I think they could do is have Aureen um, be mounted and flyable Griffin style in an instance. Obviously, I mean, we're all waiting with bated breath for that to happen. And, uh, you know, she flies us over onto Kraukatoric. We do a bit where we're, like, doing battle and lancing people from, like, the Griffins with the pikes on their back at the, the Death Brand Shatter in the new map. That's pretty hype, right? Uh, that's a de but not just because of what it does in the Death Brand Shatterer fight, but also because it shows an upcoming personal story. We now have special actions on the back of Griffins to play with, just like how in um, uh, you know the core maps you've got like chase the Hydra while whipping it on Raptor back. They can do stuff like that on on Aureen, but fly around Krakatoric, do some kind of vague combat sequence through the special action. She lands us on his back. I reckon we could have that in the story, but ha taking Aureen Mount out into the open world, I mean, they get away with it with PT, but I just don't see it. I don't see dying or skinning Aureen or any. It's just too weird. So perhaps she'll like duplicate herself and hatch a new one. But then there's the whole other side as well, where it's like, essentially, listen, we've got a really good flying mount. And when we, we talk about uh, you flying on Aureen, we, we're, we're all like basically assuming it will feel like flying a griffin, right? We all make that assumption. And there's kind of some logical issues and design issues there as well. What about a player who's never got a griffin and never learn the controls? Because they're quite nuanced controls. Diving and boost diving and bringing yourself up and knowing when to flap and all that. There's actually a lot to get through with the griffin. So what, the, the devs just assuming all the players will just have that learning curve done? Are they going to have to add a mini tutorial? Like, there's a lot of little things there, but the the, the, the crux of the matter is when you come out at the, at the end, is it worth adding another flying mount when we already have one? And we have such a deep expectation the controls will be very similar. Is it worth it? Um, and I think the answer is actually no. So then I don't know what they do with episode six. Maybe we'll get that Aureen flight thing in a story step, but the idea of a totally new mount could just be something completely arbitrary and different. I still want a Nuktuka. I want a Nuktuka. I want a big badass fucking magical fantasy looking North African rhino that smashes through stuff. And I don't care if the beetle can already smash through stuff. Let the Nuktuka do it too. But And I, I want like a multi-person mount as well. I want like a, a cooperative mount. 
that would be hype. There's there, there's a lot of possibilities still. You can go back to my mount speculation video, which is like nine months old now, but you can go back to that, and it's still everything I said in it is still 100% relevant. All right, let's try this again. What is this? Is it because I'm appearing offline? I don't know. I don't know what this is. Let me look back at chat and see what we got. You want an ooze mount? <laughs> you would just submerge into it, wouldn't you? Blue suck on! Just became a legendary spud. Dude, 24 months. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoy your two years in a row. That's incredible. Thank you very much. Party mounts. Yeah, there you go. People are saying that. Um, let me scroll through. Okay, yeah, so Flag does want to do the lottery, so that's good. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Uh, you had that a lot when you got home from uni and you were just like, just going to watch this YouTube video before doing some homework. Uh, it's 11 a.m. I'm at work. Why are you swapping to NA? Because I said to people that I'd swap to NA and they'll throw their toys out of the pram if I don't actually do it this time. Why not do it on EU server? Seems like there's more life there. Again, let's not let's not all be completely like crazy here. Remember that we're doing story, okay? It's not like we're gonna have to have big Zergs and squads charging around. We'll have a couple of people and that's it. Um Okay, he's given me instructions in Discord. Okay, so let's do the lottery giveaway. Okay, I see. Oh, I didn't see you there. All right, so uh, I'm opening the spreadsheet. Oh, of course. Yeah, dude, it's been so long since we've done this. All right, so everybody who participated in the lottery, thank you so much because I've hardly talked about the lottery for ages. Um, the winners here will be, if you get first place in the lottery, you win 1,150 ectos. If you get second place, you win 328. If you get third place, you get over 164. So, um, uh, best of luck to you guys. I hope that if you did enter the lottery, you, uh, um, you feel good about this. And, uh, so let's see. So I'm going to draw the third winner. Oh, oh it's asking me I to sign in. The app isn't verified. Only proceed if you know how. Responsibility Advance. isn't easy. Wow, they really don't want me doing that. Save wants access to my Google account. I'm trusting you here, Flag. Okay, so running script. Script finished. Okay, so uh, the winner of the third place Ectos was Cortan with 1356. Congratulations to you. The winner of second place, this is for our 328 Ectos is ticket holder number 143 Vles Kvok Vok 6781 congratulations to you oh, and I finally the first that. place winner who has the 63rd ticket is Zarkiala 9672 going home with over a thousand ectos congratulations easy. to you guys um and uh yeah there you go i think that's it right flag I think we got that sorted out. That's pretty awesome. So congratulations, everyone. Give them a big round of applause. Whee! Cool. Now, can I get in the guild again? Well, this is really bloody weird. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to serve a transfer over to NA for you all. And then we'll try and get into the guild hall and do the guild upgrades and stuff from there. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to be on Dark Haven. Not that it's relevant in any way. Awesome. Everybody give a massive that shout and thank you to Flag as well, who seeds some of these prize pools. And um, uh, might have been a bit let down by me there by not advertising the lottery well enough. I mean, we did a good year, really, of talking about it and talking about it and talking about it to the point that I think... Uh, what I think we need to do, Flag, is find a way to have the lotteries like as really rare special things. Um, like, imagine if we tie a lottery to, you know, n a new content stream of some kind. That might be pretty cool, right? Rocker says, my e my raiding heart wants an Ender's Echo mount that can pick up other players against their will. <laughs> That'd be kind of great. Aureen is a griffin already. Why would we want to have two griffins, says Ben Lubar? Yeah, there you go. So I must be really far up in chat because uh, 
Yeah. Where can you find my Ellie builds? The Ellie build you were looking at there, I think, is just a Tempest support. Um, if you engage your brain and look at traits, you can figure it out. I think it was pure magic. No, it was Zealots I was running there. It's really nice. I like Zealots uh, running that, especially on uh, the Conjured Amalgamate. Because if you do a certain strat, everybody just stacks all the swords and you annihilate the goddamn thing. You hit so much damage uh, just by utilizing fire and glyph and stuff at the right time in that fight, even as a support. Unless other people see our Aurene as classic griffins through the new Blish animal technology. Oh, that's an interesting thought, but... You... But MMO Shards, there's just such a weird thing to go down when it's Fashion Wars 2, you know, when it's a game built around cosmetics. So who is the cosmetics for? Well, like, what we're going to have the next mount is an undiable, unskinnable griffin. Like, what? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Oh, but you don't have to spend 250 gold for it. It's, come on, it's not, it's not good. Uh, or if it is diable and skinnable, it's only you that gets to appreciate it, and we're just wondering how it looks to other people and stuff. It just... I can't see it, guys. I cannot see it. I don't think the Aurene Mount thing is even worth any any real discussion at all, to be honest. Um, right, re-logging in. That what I think you could get, all right, and this would be hilarious, and I'd love the devs to do it just to see the anger from people. What they do is when the season ends and Aurene becomes an Elder Dragon or whatever, all right, Okay, when the season ends and the big moment with Aurene comes, whether it's the end of season four, the end of season five, the end of next expansion, even whatever. When it comes, there will be a legendary griffin skin on the gem store that turns your griffin into Aurene. Price point, 4,000 gems. <laughs> oh, I'd love it. I would love it so much. Can you imagine how hateful people would be? Because everyone who loves Aurene is like, no, Aurene is so amazing. Oh, my heart melts for Aurene. All those kinds of people are exactly the kind of people to lose their shit because it's the most unprecedentedly expensive uh, legendary mount they ever released. It'd be so good. <laughs> I don't know how much gold it is. Probably about a thousand. It's like 40 quid. It's literally like buying the game again, but just for the one skin. But you have it high priced because... You're letting the whales fund the game, and you don't want a million orines around everywhere. You want only a few, so just let have a few diehards do it. Responsibility. You'd still pay for the time you mount on YouTube. <laughs> those were some interesting videos. I I'm really interested in the tech behind those. It's crazy stuff. Oh, I can get into the guild hall now. All right. Eight eight thousand gems make it a hundred euros. Yeah, that's the maximum amount you can buy in bulk, right? With a credit card in the game. <laughs> I mean, I honestly would not have this most remote problem with that. I would only have a problem with it because I know the community would have a problem and it would be bad PR. I would only have a problem with the bad PR. I would not have a problem with the rest of it. I really wouldn't. I've explained this before. Live with honor, die with courage. Oh, I love the tank. Boom! Look, okay, good. So level 32. We've also got leather synthesizer. Five imperial stars, incandescent dust, ectos, cores leather. Boom. Cloth synthesizer. Bolts of cloth instead. Everything else is the same. Oh, what? We have everything. Why can't I buy that? Oh, no, we don't. We've ran out of Ethereum there. All right. Well, there you go. Shit. I'm going to spend our favor as well. Um, they're going to want that consumed. Let's go to LA for that because I can't remember where the other vendors are. Right, and now let me get Twitch chat up so I can actually see what the hell is going on here. There we go. Turn off Twitter. Finally start playing now, guys. Now let me just say, if you want to play... Um, uh, with me Please go slow Don't be scared to run really crappy builds Because we want the boss fights to have some impact And uh, yeah just chill out with it basically The guys who played on EU yesterday Were amazing uh, But yeah so NA if you want to play You can but it's going to be about four people Because sorry Guild Wars 2 is down now I have reason to do revision Oh EU is down 
Oh, really? Is that what happened? Right as I transferred off, EU went down. That's hilarious. Uh, an Aureen skin as a reward. So a Jules there is saying, don't sell on the gem store, just have it as a reward. I disagree with that because I don't like the idea of seeing billions of Aureens all around. But maybe it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, would I buy an Aureen skin for 4k gems? Hell no, I wouldn't. But other people would. Uh, I wouldn't buy it. I don't care enough about Aureen or mount skins. So I'm, I, I would definitely wouldn't be the target audience for that. But I'd appreciate the money it would generate for the game. Have I talked about the sigil of nullification controversy? A non-troversy. Oh, I love you for using that word, non-troversy. Wow. Yeah, because I was about to whine. That, what are you talking about, controversy? Uh, no. Oh, yeah, in passing, this has been going on. But I haven't been going for the Elegy Army yet, so I don't particularly care. WP, I'd like to support ArenaNet, but I'm not a whale. What would be the best thing to buy in the gem store to encourage good practices with ArenaNet? That's a really great question, Trio DVD. Uh, I can't be bothered to go into a massive gem store analysis here because I'm trying to do story for people, but maybe on another stream we can look into that a bit more. WP's presence brought the EU servers down, maybe. <laughs> oh my god, Rocker wants to see the world burn. Look at that. Gate it behind 10,000 provisioner tokens. What? That would... That would be pretty... That would be good for Heart of Thorns. <laughs> Actually, it wouldn't even, because they're not even gated behind metas and stuff anymore. It's like a, such a non-mechanic now. Yeah. All right. People are now saying that the music is too loud when people were going on about it being so too low yesterday, even though the settings haven't changed. Can I just make the point that Lion's Arch has ridiculously loud music and we're not going to be there on the rest of the stream? So hopefully that's uh, resolution enough for you. All right, so, yes, let's get back into the story. Yeah, oh, it's good to see you in chat as well, Dural. Um, yeah, provisioner tokens are easy to get now, so... I mean, they're still time-gated, right? And it's still annoying to do every little bit on the, uh, uh, on the TP. Like, oh, I've got to get this rare and, like, bulk them up. But at least you can just park different characters now in very simple locations and just be done. Still, I think that would be crazy for the Aureen thing. All right, okay, I'm going to accept party request now. Remember, e uh, North America, we can have about five people. We don't want to, like, you know, clutter this up too much. We do really want to uh, dive in and enjoy ourselves. So, you know. um, unfortunately, the music carries over. That's true. But when we go into the uh, question mark, question mark, question mark anomaly, which we're due for in a minute. Well, we'll look at the poem in Aura again in, in a second. Um, why am I on this character? What am I doing? I thought it was weird that I was coming here. We're on the wrong freaking guy. We want to play our Weaver. Yeah, the music will force change anyway to the really slow Farron's Fly music. Uh, which will be all eerie and weird. Wouldn't that drive up prices on weapons? Because the provisioners need, hmm, what an idea, economy saver. Yeah, and then you've you've infused money back into Ectos. Whoa, the, re the fix. Aureen to the rescue. Hideous or remount. Okay, too many people tried to join the party at once, so we bugged it all. So, uh, this is like... You guys have to wait a second and then join on. Don't send an invite. Send a join request. That's it. And then you'll be able to get in. A fellow 30k plus person here. Uh, 33k plus person. Sorry, soup. Welcome. Um... God, I've got to get back in the rhythm of it. Uh, so we'll continue in the dialogue. Did we already speak to Timey? Is she asked us to climb the tower now? She has. Climb the northern tower and read the uh, tablet. So uh, this is where Timey makes that really awesome mention of Traherne. We already did a stream last weekend basically about this, but I will just do it all again anyway because a lot of you guys are here just to the story. There you go. So we have a team now. None of you are in my Jahai. I am on N EU now. Uh, NA, sorry. Yeah, are you all EU people? <laughs> You've just watched me server transfer. Am I sure I'm on NA? Not anymore. I thought I was. What? Why am I still on EU? I server transferred. I transferred. What? Board is pass. I transferred, people. I transferred. All right. 
it, it's the game's being weird, all right? Look, we couldn't guild swap. We couldn't go to the hall. We couldn't do any upgrades. It's breaking. It's the game, all right? It's not me. I did transfer. I guess I'll wait. I even refused to let me log in saying your transfer is currently in progress. I transferred, but the login server was down while I did it. Ah, weird. Freaky stuff. Oh, the game is punishing us. Look, it's already been 40 minutes. We haven't even started yet. I do wonder, given all these callbacks to Season 1, whether we ever meet Scarlet and Omad in the mists. Imagine Timey interacting with Scarlet's ghost to show how far time he's come from a Scarlet fan go girl don't. I mean, here's the thing. Like, you raise a really interesting... You, you posture a cool thing there, right? But... Uh, where did I leave this? Uh, if you go to my subreddit, you'll see some, well, we were talking about Glint in the Mists, and, um, you know, it, it's a real, it's Pandora's box that they opened in this patch, okay, where they're basically saying people's lives go on in the mist, which we essentially knew, right? Like, in Guild Wars 1, you had the weirdness of Sarah in the mist, you know, Gwen's mum. And we go and we have multiple conversations with her about, Oh, I met this lovely boy, mommy. Oh, did you? Oh, be sure to keep your legs together until the third date. Blah, blah, blah. And then and then they're getting married and then they're doing this. And you can continue going back and speaking to her mum, even though her mum's dead. And that's like a really profound thing, right? That says so much about the way people should think of and treat death and stuff in this franchise. But they kind of get away with it because not everyone was able to walk to the underworlds as we were. So it was kind of a, a privilege of Gwen's. But what they're doing now is they're looking back at that idea and they're completely deconstructing what death means in Tyria. And how you treat that narratively is, is very delicate. They can completely rob the stakes of the drama of all our deceived brethren at this point, you know? Like the, the tragedy of, of Traherne. I just want to point out here, by the way, I'm trying to log in again and I can't. It's, it's actually not letting me. Is the game totally, totally effed up right now? What world are we on here? It says I've come to America. Oh, game client is unable to log in. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll just keep trying to, to spam, click in. But it, it's it's Pandora's box. It's a very scary thing they did. So anyway, on the subreddit, we're talking about how, you know, if they've just established Glint is still around. Is Glint still prophetic? Like, and I think what the devs need to do is they need to address and acknowledge that it, with, now they are still there in, in, in spirit, literally, but they they are different somehow. I think that the, the story needs to demonstrate that there's some kind of alteration in the minds and the bodies of these, these creatures and their capabilities so that you don't rob the stakes from all future potential deaths and this and that. And so what Cossage says there, oh, time you could meet Scarlet. Basically, every single character in this story has got some bereavement that it would be interesting for them to see. So, it's Pandora's box in that you... You say that's exciting, but it's exciting for someone else and something else and something else. And I think that it's just a scary road to go now to even begin to consider acknowledging any of that stuff because I mean what are we looking for next Logan finding resolution with Dylan it it, it worries me all right this whole thing worries the hell out of me uh, it's amazing and exciting and I'm along for the ride right now but I, I I think the devs have to tread very carefully over the next two episodes or things can get very strange and the more diligence they try to pay to that strangeness the more abstract the entire premise behind this universe and this this world becomes and i think that alienates people and i think that it makes it di difficult to deliver decent emotional payoff um what i'm trying to say is they can't interface too much with this thing that they're establishing because the second they do you make Tyria's fate seem small and inconsequential and distance you, you're kind of turning us into that sort of morgamoth mentality of uh it doesn't matter, do you know what I mean? The, the death of a few ants is irrelevant. And that that's fun from, like, an artistic standpoint. And that's fun from a let's treat Guild Wars 2's narrative as art. But I really don't think it can be truly... Uh, I, I don't think it can truly emphasize that and go for that with what, what it is as a product in the real world, as a consistently developed story continuing, you know, medium like this. I, I, I just think it's dangerous, all right? 
That's all I'll say. I also think any of you who have watched my Final Fantasy X and X2 playthroughs, and I mean all of them, you'll see how that, again, that's a very similar setting, fantasy RPG setting, that realized they were breaking apart the concept of death at the very bare bones in their universe. And by the time you get to the very end of the story in the second game and a lot of the the um, the fiend story, uh, what was the term? There's a word for it. The, not, not the meta story. All the extras that are basically going on in the story. All, everything you're dealing with is the side quests and, you know, the logical uh, depths to where the, everything ends up going. Uh, it kind of all starts, like I said, it gets really abstract. That's a, that's a beautiful example of how abstract th things can get. Uh, I've really, really not described what I'm talking about very well there, but hopefully people are on board. Tell Flag to stop man spreading. He has stitches. Uh, he has me in stitches right now. <laughs> are you man spreading, Flag? <laughs> I still can't log in, guys. What is this? What is going on? Are we doomed to not be able to... Sh I, I didn't do a stream on Saturday. We did a long one yesterday, but come on, man. Where's our story stream? This isn't good. Everyone's just going to be like, oh, yeah, screw screw watching WP. What about the gem giveaways and stuff we were going to do? We were going to try and blag some more subs, weren't we? Uh, I can't... I, I literally... It continues airing on me. I, keep this entertaining, chat. Keep, keep the messages coming. Without you, uh, this is going to be pretty dead dead as a dodo soon. Um, a consequence of dealing with Krauk in the mist could be making access to the mist more difficult in the future. That's an interesting thought, man, uh, which I like as well. You know, when we deal with the very low magic environment and grounded environment of Guild Wars 1 and how the franchise was established there. Here, I'll give you guys some lore here. Um... To entertain yourselves with while we wait and watch a login screen. The idea of traveling to the mist was no petty thing. Uh, and it, in gameplay, we may have ended up having that experience. But, you know, uh, the, the, the idea of your average citizen was that it was very much another layer of, of, of existence that you would never interact with. And so it was kind of okay if there were these crazy things and people living on in the afterlives and stuff because it was such a distant, separate thing. Um, and as Guild Wars 2 has gone along and the magic and the quantities of magic that are around and the capabilities of uh, the entities we fight as well as ourselves, travel through the mists has become very commonplace, it feels. And that's, that's, you know, that's where some of these boundaries start to fall away. So I like that idea. But listen to this. This is where we were at the start of Guild Wars 1. And to return to this level, this low magic environment, you know, facilitated it here. I'm not saying we need to go back to low magic in Guild Wars 2. But listen, Lord Odrin. Using a spell of his own devising and the sacrifice of many souls, Lord Odrin, a powerful arcanist who specialized in the study of temporal distortions, opened a portal that offered him access to the mist and eventually into the rift itself. The spirits who had given their lives to earn access to the hallowed afterlife were outraged. They turned their fury upon the intruder, attacking Lord Audrin with all of their legendary collective might. But it had been hundreds of years since most of the spirits had interacted with the physical world, and none of them had ever done so in their shadow form. As powerful as they had been in life, they could not harm the physical manifestation of the wizard lord. Not yet. He was untouchable here in the land of the dead, and he travelled freely through the Hall of Heroes. Right, that's just the opening paragraph. Listen to how much stuff is layered into that that implicitly says this is fucking rare and doesn't happen. Like, Audrin walking around in the mist was such an unprecedented, wild, crazy thing that it pissed off everything was, that was there, but they were completely incapable of even assessing it, right? Turn it around to now with air and snafters. Well, I, I don't want to spoil things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, over the years, Lord Odrin learned to use the Rift to travel across the multiverse. He opened portals on nearly all of the different worlds, turning the Rift into his own personal gateway. But though he was clever, the Wizard Lord himself was only mortal. And eventually, the spirits of the Hall discovered a way to interact with the corporeal world. Odrin's last physical journey through the Rift cost him his mortal life. The Wizard Lord was torn to shreds by hundreds of angry souls seeking retribution for his trespasses. Like, trespasses, guys. Like, 
they they weren't happy with this. They don't. This shouldn't be going on, right? Uh, when Orjun's mortal body died, the, wit the now the story changes and it's about other stuff. But I'll, I'll finish it off for you so that uh, you've got some closure. When Orjun's mortal body died, the wizards, the, sorry, the wards and enchantments that kept his portals hidden failed, and the gates to the Hall of the Heroes were laid open to all who were. Uh, were laid open to all who were able to find them. The wizard lord had been canny, though. Audrin knew that one day he too might be ensconced in the Hall of the Heroes, so he hid the portals in the most treacherous locations he could find. The fear of death, he surmised, would keep the meek at bay. But a long time's passed, and it's clear now that the wizard lord, like the gods before him, underestimated the greed of men. Over time, the whereabouts of the portals have been revealed. Though they remain difficult to get to, there are those with enough skill and enough bravery to reach them. And every day, the numbers of the intruders to the Hall of Heroes rises. An unending battle for supremacy rages, rages inside the Hall. The spirit inhabitants have taken to playing groups of mortals against each other for sport, placing bets on which will make it farthest and giving special aid to those they favor. Control of the Hall itself has rewards. And its cost as well. So what this lore is actually doing is justifying the PvP format, Heroes Ascent, where a spiritual ghost, in our case of Turai Osa, says, hey, yeah, look, you mortals, come help me. And he wants to play us off in the hall. And so it's actually justifying the PvP format. But all that uh, prerequisite information and that groundwork it lays, right, um, I think is important. And I think it's it's important for there to be stakes on Tyria to be maintained. So, um, yeah, I've been kicked fully out of the game now. I'm logging back in. Uh, and we'll see what we got. All right, what, what are people saying in chat? Sorry, guys. Oh, my God. Um, obviously, Arena Net would only reintroduce characters who play some part in the story rather than as fan service. It was nice to see. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, that, that's what they'd have to be very careful of. Uh, t t scrolling. Man spreading is the most retarded term invented. I don't, uh, that's, this is the first time I've actually heard that term. Login servers being down aren't really within your control, are they? Maybe not. Let's play Guild Wars 1, says Smitsky. Uh, I don't know, man. What's my favorite UK slang? I don't really have any, sorry. Maybe if I thought really long and hard about it. I did see, however, um, last night on Casual Art UK, apparently up north, they have like steak pies that they put in buns. It's called like a pie in a bun, <laughs> which is amazing sounding. What was my nightmare about that had me creeping about my place in the middle of the night? Uh, I mean, I can tell that story. Um, but let me see if people want to talk about Guild Wars first. WP, what do you think about Ritlock entering the mist again and being so okay with it? I was expecting him to be a lot like, eh, no thanks. Well, um, when are you, what, what point, in Path of Fire, uh, they did actually establish that he was uneasy about it. Uh, he did say, I didn't, I don't want to go back, but I, I need to make up for what I've done kind of thing. Um, they do acknowledge it. They maybe hand wave it a bit, but POF had to go very quickly through all, the, all of its motions, so... Yeah. Uh, let's do Guild Wars 1. We still have to complete the other faction mission. Uh, yeah, but I'm not going to rand. I would want people to know we're playing Guild Wars 1 if I'm going to talk to Guild Wars 1, guys. Look, we might be able to get in game in a second. Uh, Guild Wars 2 now consortium. Let's turn Mist into a vacation destination. We should do a Tyria 3D stream where we data mine the new 2v2 PvP map that's coming up. And we also do some exploration of the new Living World maps, which I've not touched on yet. Could be cool. You like the idea that Krauk himself is the reason these spirits persist. Like, now he can travel through space and maybe time as well. And he tried to... Can Krauk Atoric travel through time? I mean, you might think that's a crazy question because the consequence of saying yes to that is just bonkers. But they are acknowledging that the rifts are space and time. And Krauk Atoric and his death branded Shatter and whatever have been going into those very rifts... They have done that, but I think what the devs have done with the Orion thing that I'm, I wanted to play with you guys right here is they basically demonstrated, you know, when a rift plops a fractal, as they said on the AFC, they basically are fractals, right? When a rift plops a fractal at our feet, interior, it is, you can't change the past, 
And it's really important to have that clear. Like, uh, Carlton Cuse and Damon Lindelof tried so hard during Season 5 of Lost to make clear. Um, you got to keep some stuff sacred. If this game story goes, oh, Kraukatorik went back in time and started... <laughs> I don't know what, actually successfully flew over Ebonhawk this time and messed up Jenna, Dylan, and Logan together. And he actually, uh, you know, did X, Y, and Z. He woke up earlier. I, I don't know. He uh, went to Lion's Arch right as Scarlet pe penetrated the ley line and absorbed all of that. So now Mordremoth's still asleep or something. I mean, it's just ludicrous, isn't it? And it's it's a fun thought experiment. I did that video, uh, that Fringe-inspired video, talking about what if the Flame Seeker prophecy had never been written and just did, a you know, basically a fan fiction on that. But uh, I don't think the game should really touch that prospect, that potential. Um, total off the wall, but I hardly recommend the new show Maniac. So bizarre and good. Wait, you hardly recommend it? That means you don't recommend it much, Jules. But it's bizarre and good. Um, let's take a moment to appreciate that Shaman has become the inevitable and he's gone full on Halloween mode. Um... What, wait, he's rebranded his Twitter account as he to be called The Inevitable? There was something called The Inevitable recently, wasn't there? What was it that was called The Inevitable? In one of these recent patches, there was something called The Inevitable, wasn't there? Don't worry about not being able to log in. We're just having a discussion in map chat about dragon poop. Oh, you're in map chat still. I'm jealous. Servers online on EU. I'm on EU and I don't have any problem. Look at what we've gone through to get here to the NA people. I'm trying to log in again here. Oh, I got in. I got in. I got in. Yeah, he can't screw us by going back in time. But if he can time travel in the mist to go and try and grab Snap at the moment of his death, that would be a way we could justify him persisting as a spirit. Oh, the inevitable is the title for getting Joker starved. That's it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, I remember now. That was this release. Okay, I got back in. Who knows what lag and stuff will suffer from here. Let's actually play the game, shall we? Jesus, sorry about that, guys. Good job keeping some interesting discussion and stuff as we go. Looks like we still have our party. So that's good. All right. So, uh, Tanya wants us to find a tablet um, that she suddenly knows nearby. So, Tanya is no Orion expert, and yet she just seems to know, oh, there's going to be a tower nearby. So, we're going to be wondering what's going on there. Why, why does she know that? And we'll ask her in a second. The devs are about to establish... That Timey and Traherne may have communicated a little bit more than we at first realised. By the way, first time I played this patch, I got stuck inside one of these trees. It was very frustrating. Because the waypoints aren't anywhere nearby. I'm going to turn the game down a little bit because uh, people are still commenting online. Alright, okay. So, check it out. Uh, first of all, can I just say that the glyphs and the runes slightly animated and moving here. I wonder if anyone has like tried to translate as or the into the Orion syllabary, or the syllabary right? Uh, which we do know was a thing, and Siren's Landing touched on a little bit. I wonder. It looks beautiful though, anyway, doesn't it? It's nice to see an Orion plaque alive. I, I've got to say, to my judgment of this area, it just feels a little bit too. I don't know, I feel bad because on the AFC they said they built all these uniquely and stuff to look like or I'm not sure what I feel like is lacking. It's got the golden thing. I guess the arches is one of the main things. Come on, or or in its prime was all about the giant arches. Where are they? I suppose they can't squeeze them into this one. Found the tablet. How did you know it would be here? Something Trahern told me once. Uh, okay, what does the last line of the poem say? And I will chase it back to you. Changes the whole meaning. That's a legendary poem by an Orient soldier. It was Traherne's favorite. The final line was lost when the city sank. I wish he could have seen this. Yeah, me too. So that confirms it, I guess. An echo of the Char invasion was ripped out of time. Ugh. Wait till the prior hears about this one, right? So, uh, lots of little things to compliment here straight away. Number one, excellent usage of the law book UI. Very happy with that. Number two, the dialogue. Timey doesn't really sound like she cares much. Uh, where is it? I wish Traherne could have seen this. You hear that from the commander, and you really believe it, right? The commander knew Traherne so well. We were, like, tight. 
I don't even know if any any Silvari even was as good. Well, there must have been over the years. 25 years. We only know what one. Anyway, listen. We were good friends. And so I, it really means something. And then Timey sounds like really aloof. She's like, yeah, me too. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. Which is like the normal tiny bubbly nonsense. But I will say, I kind of really like it because she wouldn't have known him that well. And she's just trying to be polite, basically. I really get that feeling from that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, I complimented this in the other stream. But the, the, the idea that Traherne knew a poem of Orr is beautiful because he was a scholar of Orr. He followed the Orient. He, he spent years researching this dead land. He would have known about these things, about various artifacts and stuff that got pulled out of it. And he was a scholar. And I, I think he's exactly the kind of guy that would have appreciated the poetry there, right? Um, so it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. A, a really, really perfect tie of character to a piece of information. Uh, and then we get into the poem itself. And the idea... Also, so the devs, they're hinting that Timey and Traherne had spoken to one another a little bit. Now, if you actually played all of Season 1 and all of Season 2 very back-to-back, -back, you would have realised there was very little opportunity for them to ever do that. But I like this hinting that relationships were forming and people were talking to one another even beyond our little sphere of what we saw. Uh, so that's nice. Um, they do that again later for what it's worth, which I don't like to do with Timey as well. We'll get there. Uh, to do with a character that, whose name begins with S uh, and ends with F. But anyway, over to the poem. Um, I'll just read it out. And uh, so it's a little bit awkward what the devs do because they trigger the voice acting immediately when you press F. No human is going to have time to read the poem. And even if you can skim through it, it's a poem. It's meant to be deliberated upon and slowly read and savoured and enjoyed. So, like, how can the devs do that? I guess the only way would be to trigger the dialogue when we exit out of the UI, but I don't know whether they can detect that uh, engine-wise. And then also, it's voice, like, we're still reading it. So they kind of throw it up immediately, but hey, what else were they going to do? Anyway, so here you go. This is the actual poem. Darkness pays a visit. <laughs> Darkness pays or a visit with billowing robes of blackened silk. She beckons us arms outstretched i see my brothers walk forward greet her as a friend so many fold themselves into her embrace and even over their cries and the roars of the beasts i hear darkness call to me with a promise but i close myself i will not join her yet another call is more beautiful and i will chase it back to you so again, we talked about this on a recent stream. If anyone has a really tangible thing they want to dive into here. But essentially, this blackened silk, this darkness, paying a visit to awe. The suggestion is they're all kind of the same thing. We're talking about war. We're talking about disaster. We're talking about, especially with war, war sort of propagated. It's, it's his fellow soldiers joining the fight and becoming the fight. It fold themselves into her embrace. You know, they... By participating in these battles, they are perpetuating them. And is begetting the right word? They are sort of making them larger, you know, and continuing their existence. Um, so the last line here, I will chase it back to you. Without the last line, the poem seems to suggest that uh, this is a soldier who turns away from war and is pacifistic. Which is an okay interpretation I think and it may be what the writers want us to think Traherne interpreted it as because let's look at Traherne's character arc who he was at the start of 2012 Traherne didn't want to fight he was a scholar he was always turning away from the battles and if you're watching my let's play at the moment you'll be intimately familiar with these moments where uh, disasters strike where well, the battle for Fort Trinity he um, he has to lock all these people out and just get them killed. There's a massive attack from Tezato Bay uh, at the fort. And we close the doors and we just leave these people. And Traherne wonders to himself in that battle. He said, did I cause this by not acting sooner? I've been following or I've been knowing this stuff. I knew about this site for so long. I've just let Zaitan build up and up and up. Did I cause this by choosing not to fight? And that's what he'd always done. He chose not to fight. So that was his character, right? So now the devs in 2018, and how legendary is this? They give us a little other 
perhaps explanation as to why he was like that. Um, perhaps he drew strength from this poem, turning away from the battle because another call is more beautiful. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing that gets to me. Why I think that this is a bit of a shallow interpretation of mine. And I think you could go a lot deeper with this. Let's look at the antepenultimate line. All right. But I close myself. I will not join her yet. Now, Traherne read this line. Another call is more beautiful. The word yet is there. So there's already... I'm, I, I just want everybody to be 100% aware. Right now, I'm holding my hand on my monitor. Like, to block out the last line as if we can't see it. I'm basically doing this with my hand. Yeah, all right. We're doing it this. We, 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 we like so. All right. Now, Traherne reads this. He still has the word yet there. There's already a suggestion that this is circular that he will return that the, the guy has ambitions to to fight again so that entire idea that i just mentioned that Trahan, i mean it just doesn't work how does the last line as timey and we say how does the last lane change the entire meaning when this line is already pretty blunt about it so I wonder if it's actually going for something different about, you know, the actual spe specificities behind the personification. I will chase it back to you. Is you actually a third party? I will chase fighting back to you. You being the she. And her embrace. I mean, do you get what I mean? Like, it, that's, that's what throws me a bit about all of this. The yet is the heart of the poem. The author knows that the destruction of Ori is inevitable at this point, or believes it to be so, but he or she is not giving into it. And then they'll go out to the time. So that's a lovely thing that Verticality just said as well. How important is it that we're reading this poem, overlook <laughs> people dancing here, overlooking the battlefield of the, the reading of the Lost Scrolls? Is the idea that someone... Is this very specifically pointing to the event of the cataclysm? Is that why it's a famous poem? Because it was well regarded by the Priory, by Explorer... What's the Explorer that you find in the ruined version of the tower up in uh, Straits of Devastation? Is, is it famous? Not for its subject material, but the context of its creation, right? Uh, is it very specifically saying... Oh, when we say darkness pays in order to visit, was the in-universe author of this actually saying the char, right? It's not a genericized poem talking about naval sorties against corsairs and uh whatever other strife and guild wars and struggles the orients may have had over the years is it specifically the char we're dealing with here and this is the char with their black and silk why are the char a she you know like why why make the the war uh, this feminine force because the, to make it feminine i don't know is this uh, is this wrong of me i feel like making the danger of female is to like give it a beauty i hope that's not my own like bias like heterosexuality like coming into that or something but isn't that that's basically the idea to to make it delicate to make it kind to make it loving to make it welcoming isn't that kind of what it's doing which is what we're tying back into here at the end as well with chasing it back to you you a person and it's beauty, right? I don't know. I just, I, I, I feel like there has to be something in that, expressing some degree of femininity to, to the fight. So I don't know. I mean, what? This is like a, an ant wondering how a microwave works, right? That's what you're watching here. I'm the ant, and this is a microwave. There you go. That, that's, that's some of, my, that's some of my poetry. Yeah, yeah. You guys are like that. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. Let's see what you guys have to say in chat. I say it's not about the cataclysm. This fractal is the pre, 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 pre present to all. Uh, why would the vizier have a war poet mounted on a wall in anticipation of the war? Yeah, I mean, again, and yeah, when we start trying to deal with the specifics, it's like how much time did they know that the char were coming? The char had a flash engagement on Ascalon and Crita, certainly. For all, they'd have to march much further. Are the 2018 writers wanting us to? You know, deal with that. Darkness is death and he can't die just yet because he wants to return to his love. 
could change it from a tone of resistance. I'm not ready to give in to one more of planning. I have something else to finish first or whatever. And so then, then, um, like there's, there's, there's like three layers to analyze this and think about it, right? When you're wondering what the, the poem is about, you're wondering to what end the poem is trying to serve. Is it trying to inspire courage? Is it, uh, marveling at the, um, uh, is it, is it glorifying good planning, right? And then trying to encourage strategy? Is it, you know, what, what, and, and why would an Orion write a piece of work that is encouraging one thing or another, you know? Why is that compelling to this Orion rather than something else? Uh, up until this point, the only thing we really knew about the Orions is their magical proficiency, their reverence for their gods and stuff. Um... So even just getting a war poem at all is a thing. You know, we, we don't necessarily know them as a, as a loving people or whatever. What if the sculptor was Malcor? What of this? I, I, I actually wouldn't like that. Come on, let's have... There's more interesting people than just Malcor in awe. Let's make it as an exciting and rich and realistic and large of a, a, a fantasy civilization as we can. There's a minor ancient Greek goddess of war and strife. And they're not, uh, they're not supposed to be delicate in any sense. She delights in bloodshed and awfulness and the battle that rages endlessly. Yeah, I mean, it's it's very, very tricky, isn't it? Because it all comes down to how many of these layers the arena net human being in 2018 wrote, you know? that Yeah, and it, how much we respect that person when immersing themselves into this setting is how far we do our speculation. Do you know what I mean? Because there's no point going more layers than the dev that wrote it. In my opinion. But I don't know. Death of the author and all that. I think you have to think of it in terms of the context of game law, not Greece. So there was, last last stream we talked about this. There was someone who was quite, uh, quite, uh, closely pairing this to gods. Like, Tyrian gods. So they said darkness was doom, I think. And they said, uh... The silk was Duena or, or, or something and I think the general idea was it was about Doom's downfall and Grenth's rise or something. But I don't know. Or is a rather dark, serious culture if the Orion proverbs from Siren's Landing are a clue. Most of them involve death or severe punishments. Yeah, alright, so I'll stop it there, guys. But this is great, and thinking of Siren's Landing, you know, it would have been lovely if Siren's Landing could have had this kind of thing for their poems there and their uh, scriptures and whatever. Let's just hope we get another Orion release, season five or four, I guess, but I want to see it. Take me back. Take me back. Take me back to Aras Story Mode, the full thing. Make it an open world map, baby. Let's do it. All right, so anyway, that's not all. We also have on the side of the this, uh, the Vizier's Tower itself, which we can find a way to climb like so. <gasps> oh no, it's fine. Sorry for that obnoxious <laughs> freak out there. Uh, are we still climbing? I didn't realize it was this much higher. I thought it was lower than this. All right, that makes sense. No, what? I've gone too high, haven't I? Is this actually the top? It is. So yeah, this is the daily, the displaced vizier's tower. Uh... I already talked about the fact that the Massart bust is missing and the idea that maybe um, Kilbron uh, brought it here as a lich later. But it was underwater at that point, guys. So, I don't know. After Zaitan woke up and raised it, the timeline just doesn't work. Anyway, we get his mural, which still looks a bit messed up. We can't uh, interact with it anymore. But there is a book. There's actually two. This book seems to have, like, the Elementist icon on it, which is kind of weird. But we get this book, uh, the skin of the book, um, that's New Crichton, isn't it? That's a thousand percent New Crichton, so that's like bad, but I guess the devs have, I mean, this is what I'm talking about, right? When I said that this is nice to see ore in its prime, but because it's just a tiny bit of a patch, it can't be that good, right? So don't ask for it too much. This is what I mean. Like, they've just dumped a book in here. 
that's with a new cry in front page and stuff, which I could translate. Or anyone could translate with enough uh, time. Um, so, you know, you, you kind of you don't want that. You want them to dedicate a release to Orin. It's prime probably. Anyway, message from Vizier Kilbron. Your Majesty, I write this knowing it will never reach your eyes. I've been faithfully yours since the moment I entered your service. I've never wavered and I never will. I tell you this because you may not understand what I'm about to do. I belong to you, yes, but also to the Dark God. He has shown me how to end this war, and the price is steep. I will read this scroll, fully knowing the consequences. All will be gone, perhaps forgotten, but it will not be remembered as a land conquered by brutes. To me, that is worth the sacrifice. I'm sorry, old friend, and I hope one day when we meet in the afterlife, you will greet me with forgiveness. So, again, I talked about all the things I love about this. The fact they never do meet in the afterlife. He gets turned into the Undying Lich. Uh, and he never gets that moment. Razor himself is plucked out of the afterlife. His spirit is doomed to roam here. He became an Eye of Zaitan that we took out in the personal story. And he's still here in Siren's Landing. So they never met in the afterlife. Um, they say Your Majesty instead of uh, using the word Razor. I think I would have loved this even more if the word Razor appeared there. Uh, but we know that that's who he's writing to. And yeah, uh, I don't know. This, this is one of those things that just rounds out Vizier a lot, uh, Kilbron a lot more and stops him to being such a cartoon character. And I think that's really important and I adore it. Honestly, I really, really, really I think I like this more than the poem. I'm going to talk a lot less about it on this stream because we've been here way too long. But I like this more than the poem. I really do. I think it is glorious. It's a very, very cool piece. And just to see the hatred of, of the char again. Um, you know, that he hates even just... To, I would rather see it destroyed than you stand here. Like, that's such a beautifully gross and horrible thing for him to think, but believable thing for him to think, you know? Uh, and yeah, so it's, it's very cool. This opens up the question, what caused Kilbron to become a lich as we never quite learned the process in the Guild Wars verse? Yes, it's true. It is true. I've always assumed it's because the, the scroll. Here's a missed opportunity, I guess, from the devs here. Uh, there's always been the implication that the scroll, having come from the vaults beneath the Ra, where we know that the gods were also bunging a lot of other Elder Dragon crap, uh, and, you know, being in close proximity to the Elder Dragon of Undeath, there's been the implication that the Lost Scrolls were. Zaitan's leaked magic and Zaitan's influence, which is why when it's read the dude becomes a lich. It creates a huge explosion, yes, but it's like a necrotic explosion that makes him a lich, and then he has the power over the undead and all that other stuff. So that's a great implication. Uh, it's very similar to the Searing Cauldrons being implied to be of Kraukatoric. I would have liked a little bit more on that here. I would have loved a little, little extra scroll on the floor where someone, may, maybe Vizier's not the, the author of it. Maybe there's, there's a discarded letter, right? And it's a missive from a naysayer who says, Dear Kilbron, I have served faithfully as your squire these past 17 years, but no more. When I heard the itinerary of your recent travels and that you took a visit to the vaults beneath Ara, I must admit I found myself quite concerned. For we all know what deep, dark dangers have been wrought there. When the gods lived among us, they warned us not to pry. You know, something about the scroll's origin that ties it a little bit more into the Elder Dragons. Uh, I think that would have been really cool. Um, and they missed that opportunity. Also, the Masat bust is not here, which was such a fucking awesome mystery. What's going on? And they obviously knew... I mean, the thing is, they deliberately don't have the Masat bust here. They deliberately don't. But at what time does it get added there, then? At what time does a smashed up bust of a Massar get added here? Because the scroll is about to be read in this fractal. Boom. It's all underwater. Who's gonna drag and smash up a Massar bust underwater with the Lagos? Like, what are we talking about? Finally, later, Zaitan raises it up. What, now someone comes and places it there? Kilbron's gone by that point. We've already nuked him out of existence by ripping all the souls back over the bloodstone. So what's the situation? I don't know. You tell me. How is he French? <laughs> How come you can read the Orion writing off the book? I don't think it is Orion. That's the point. I think it's New Crichton, which is translatable. 
Oh, oh, you mean the character, you know, the actual UI. Uh, good question, I guess. I don't know. I don't think it's the job, the, the game's job to deal with minutiae like that. That's an unfortunate thing, right? The more realistic and better, like, pamphlet and law delivery systems, the more people scrutinize them, the higher quality things become, and you start running into other problems. No one would question that if that was regular dialogue UI, but they do now. All right, so question mark, question mark, question mark discovered. What a smile it put on my face of anticipation and caution when I first saw that. Question mark, question mark, question mark. We just went to awe. What the hell could be next? Ooh. Do you see it too? Thought perhaps it was all in my head. It just appeared out of nowhere. The fungus. I've never seen anything like it. Wherever this came from, it's not part of Tyria. As in, it's from another world? Oh, wow. We need a sample of that fungus. All right. Uh, so pretty simple. Uh, Uindal says because we can, we can't. The player character can read it. We can't. Dot dot dot. That's not a very good answer, Uindal. Because if I'm a Norn, why would a Norn know how to read ancient Orient? Why would a Silvari, having just been born into the world, I mean, you could say it's from the Dream of Dreams in that. So maybe that's more excusable. Why would you know uh, the Asura bother with that? Necessarily. Why would the Char certainly bother with that? If I'm a Blood Legion Char, you're honestly telling me it's plausible that I can just randomly read and comfortably interpret Orion written script? Come on. It's, it's not realistic. They're just glossing over it because, you know. So, yeah, anyway, uh, we are. Now, the devs are very weird with the writing here. We've never seen the fungus, so it's not from Tyria. Now, because of the map, and the audio and the look of the room and the low gravity and everything. I think we can have every reason to be confident as players that this is not Ontario, that this is another world. And I will happily, you know, indulge that. And that's very fun. But in terms of pure dialogue, this is like sloppy as all hell. Oh, I've never seen that. It mustn't be Ontario. What? Come on, man. Tyria is enormous. There could easily be a fungal cave a million miles, you know, a thousand miles west of wherever you've been. Uh, but anyway, um, it's cool to tie the priory up there and Timey's enthusiasm is well shared by me So we go in and you get some really cool audio and stuff here. Uh, sorry You guys haven't seen the best of the map at all yet Yeah, we have music volume on What the careful inhaling the spores could have I can't feel my fingers. Adverse effects. In the space between two Asura gates, do you cease to exist? Is the you who returned from the dead the same as the you who died? Can Palawa Joko awaken himself? Oh, have you ever noticed how soft Ritlock's fur is? Mm. That's it, Commander. Think of Ritlock. Oh no. I don't like this. Are they truly your friends? Or do they follow you out of obligation? Just focus on reaching me. You'll be okay. Alright, so the problem we'll have here is it should keep talking and I want to basically follow the talking all the time or maybe it does stop at the moment so this is amazing this is honestly so so well written so funny so crazy bizarre and also quite deep in certain bits so uh yeah we we inhale the spores we start hallucinating it's all very funny it's farron's voice actor they use for these like the speaking mushrooms which is great it's obviously a reference to the quag and deep thoughts snippets that they did on their live streams uh, that they, they enjoyed a lot and obviously having it here in games nice. So let's actually try and answer the questions Shall we because I think it's kind of fun and somebody wanted me to do that yesterday uh, In the space between two Asura gates. Do you cease to exist? Uh, now I don't know a hundred percent how the game is coded, but I'm 99% sure That you don't seek to exist between two Asura gates now the reason I say that is if you go to like Ratasum, okay, this is going to be pretty nerdy here. As a ranger, 
and you stand near like the Asura gate here. This Asura gate connects to the idea incubation lab or you can stand to this here. But basically you get the connection, right? And if you stand as a ranger, your pet can go into the Asura gate when you don't. And your pet will actually teleport in the in-game engine to the other Asura gate. Would you believe it? Now, the pet doesn't have to worry about loading screens or anything. So you can... And neither do we, the players, either. So as long as we're on the same map, you will see he just pops in the same instance backwards and forwards. It's literally just they move the coordinates. So if we're actually going to answer this question as far as Guild Wars 2 as a product's done, uh, the answer is no. You do not cease to exist. It is instantaneous, immaculate, perfect travel. You are... Uh, and you're not, by the way, deconstructed here and reconstructed here. You are moved because... The entire sense of where you are standing, your coordinates, is all that matters. And they are what changes. Uh, and by the way, then once the pet gets here, he will snap back to you. Uh, and then it just goes backwards and forwards a million miles a second. And you see, he just keeps doing that. So that's the answer. The more interesting question is, do you cease to exist while on loading screens? And I think the answer to that is yes. But the mushroom didn't ask, ask that. So you go. Nerdy answer number one. Question number two. Is the you who returned from the dead the same as the you who died? So this is... Um, oh, what's that? That's the, the theory of continued... Or, or whatever. Look, this is that Soma thing again, isn't it, right? Which is amazing subject material. And lots of fun. And I seriously recommend you guys uh, watch the Visual Wood channel where uh, Matt and I were playing Soma. I should really check the comments on that. It's been so long. That'll probably make me smile if anybody's left any comments over there. But, uh, yeah, um... Uh, we definitely are not the same person who wakes up than we were when we went in. We, uh, as a character on the servers, have a different experience value uh, associated with us. We have different story flags on our account triggered. We, um, you know, we, we, are, we are held as different uh, data-wise on the server. We are not the same creature. All right, narratively as well, to, to talk just about the story and so these really dumb ideas here. Uh, it's kind of a really fun thought as well, actually. Uh, just as a question. I like that the commander is... It, it, like, And this is what I mean by incisive. I love the idea that the commander would actually be worried about that. And has probably been privately been thinking, Holy crap, man. Am I the same? You know, like, that would, that's still rocking and affecting our psychology in, our, in the way we, we think. And that's awesome. I like that. So, yeah. Uh, next question. Can Palawa Joko awaken himself... I think the answer to that is yes, isn't it? That's how he's, he's, he's cheated death every other time. Because he's awakening himself. My answer to that is yes. It's only a speculation. but And the reason he can't is because having been consumed by an elder dragon, he is so bodily exploded and destroyed it now that, you know, it's not a big deal anymore, maybe? I don't know. Um, but I think the answer to that is yes. And then we say, have we ever noticed how soft Ritlock's fur is? Which, as a line here, is very funny, and I think that's very cool, right? And the guy says, oh, yeah, think of Ritlock. Don't worry, don't worry. Um, but we will see that there'll be consequences to us saying that out loud in front of a member of the Priory. So, Timey is about to annoy the hell out of me. So, let's go back. Somebody on yesterday's stream pointed out how sinister this room is as well, by the way. It's kind of funny, but it is also very sinister. What if we never got back? It's kind of like, what's that horror movie where people are trapped underground? And then, so spoilers for that horror movie. They're like trapped in like the, the catacombs beneath France. And they get lost down there and they've got no map and they can't get out. So they're just wandering around and they start hallucinating in the dark and, uh, you know, just start starving. And it's just really quite gripping. But the end of the movie is they get, they escape. And they're like, uh, you know, they've been hallucinating the whole movie. But finally one of them finds the exit and they get out and they get in a car and their friends are like, oh yeah, all right, we'll take you to the hospital. We're all good. And they get to the hospital and they think they're saved. And then suddenly they, they realize they're still underground. And they wake up and they're, they're, they're still down there. And the entire thing was just a hallucination. It's really, really, you know, quite harrowing, really. Um, that could happen in here, too. Ah, oh, there you go. From above, so below. But, yeah. So, uh, anyway, let's go, go on over. There we go. Back safe and sound. And armed with new data. <sighs> Please don't mention this to anyone. Mention what? I, um, may have already sent a recording to literally everyone you know. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that line annoys me. 
That annoys me so much. They're going too far with her. They're going too far. I know she's supposed to be bubbly and yee hee hee, I'm tiny, fun, fun, fun. That actually winds me up so much. And I'm sorry to be such a grump. Tell me, chat, did you like that line? I really hated that line because if you actually know anyone in real life like that, it's like they just don't give a crap. You don't get to just say, hee hee hee, I did it, sorry. Fuck you. You're not sorry, otherwise you wouldn't have done it. You knew it in the moment you were doing it that it would be a problem. It's so annoying. Don't laugh at me while apologizing. It really winds me up. I I mean, honestly, she's a friend. She's a bad friend. Honestly, that pissed me off. Bad. And I know most people are just supposed to bite their finger and go, ha ha, she's very cute, isn't she? But that's exactly the kind of thing. You know, people treat like chihuahuas, right? Like, oh, it's the little dog. It's trying to bite me. It's been a fucking horrible, miserable little thing. But, oh, it's really cute and it's small and it's funny. Even though it's being a dick and they just have all these really horribly bad behaved dogs. That's what Timey is there. She's a badly behaved dog. I don't care if you're being cute. That was a shitty thing to do. And don't laugh at me while trying to apologize. It annoyed me. Really badly annoyed me. I was I'm such a miser about that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Anyway. It was funny, right, guys? Ooh. So, uh, yeah, this guy was cool. Look, he, he, he keeps it to himself. It works in the story. It's horrible in real life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, a, and it's actually a compliment to the writers. There, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, trying to put the game down or anything. It's, it's a compliment to the writers because it is. She is so uh, realistically written at this point that I'm judging her as an actual human being, right? Uh, as a friend, as an actual character, uh, and the intonation and the giggle and everything about the way that that line is delivered is so flawless that it's aggravating me on a very like real human level. Which, you know, is only to the game's credit. Timey tends to be on a bit of a back foot for me anyway. Looks like you've reached one of the anomalies. What do you see? Timey, it's a jungle. In the middle of the desert. Wait, a what? Okay, um, describe it. Any flora you recognize? Fauna? You're not going to believe it, but I see chalk. Lots of them. What? <laughs> Did you say Chuck? But that should be impossible. They're native only to the Maguma region. <laughs> Garrick, you're in the other room. How did you? This requires extensive study. I'll need a sample of the insect's mucus. Make that several samples. Well, you heard him. All right, okay. So first, before I go into a run, how good is the music on this map? It's so, like, eerie and, like... I'm going to use the word plodding. That sounds horrible and, like, it's, uh or whatever. It's, it, I'm not trying to be rude about it. It's I love this music. Like, listen to this. We've we've missed the best bit, really. But it's I really, really, really. I think it's so perfect, so fit for purpose. The music on this map. Uh, anyway, yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> um, Gorik comes tumbling over, and he's really excited about the insects or whatever. Uh, I know you guys really like that voice sound effect. If you're wearing a headset when you listen to that, it might actually make you think someone's behind you. Uh, really funny stuff. The, um, the actual reason we study the chart here, just for his sake, you know, it's not particularly important, is it? But it's fine. Makes sense. And, uh, yeah, so we just sort of go through. There's not much to say more about the Maguma thing that I haven't said on the other videos. We've got that break bar down really good there. Uh... Except, you know, I just really like how beautifully they've recreated Maguma Jungle in the Jahai Bluffs here, right? Uh, it, it's amazing. Someone just said, by the way, in chat, Hey, WP, I just came here from your YouTube channel. Uh, your videos really help me understand this game better. Thank you very much, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, I hope you've been enjoying them. Yeah, people really liked Gorik busting in from the other room. It was weird for me because, again, it sounded so real. It almost, like, it almost... Uh, it just seems super out of place kind of thing, but uh, People have really taken to it quite like quite well, and I'm gonna I'm trying to not be so picky anymore I need to get used to the difference between ashen blast and Plasma burst in terms of range and stuff You thought I fell yeah, right you'd think it's coming from my mic wouldn't you? Um, it doesn't sound like a part of the game really have I done the bounty on this part of the map? Yes, there's two Wyverns you fight, isn't there? I think that's what it was. I have done it. 
<clears throat> You're scared of the idea of a cr lay crazed chak. Imagine if they keep feeding on this volatile magic and grandpa. Yeah, the, the chak are a really good sleeper villain. I think they're a lot like the coden, the coden in, in, the, in the story, in that they have a lot of potential to become really prominent faction. Uh, um, because, yeah, they just got so much they can feast on and, and, and whatnot. Hopefully the mucus samples here become red. So I guess the only thing about the mucus sample bit of the story is it just feels like very random and not really a part. It's just an excuse for something to do in this area of the jungle and nothing more. So I, I guess what I hope happens now is... Um, so that's a bracer. I'm going to CC it, right? Uh, I, I've lost my train of thought. Yeah, I hope that the Chalk Mucus becomes something and is referenced a bit later by Gorik, maybe. I don't know. Um, that would be nice. Because right now, it does just feel like, oh, we're doing it for a Well, second. what's the result, Gorik? They're Chalk. Maguma Chalk. In the desert. What a time to be alive. Okay. So, now a chunk of Maguma is in Alona, too. Writing that down. So, so Blish and I have been analyzing the samples you found, and you are not gonna believe this. I don't believe it. <laughs> that disturbance you saw at the summit, it was a rift in the nest, and it's happening all over the place. Ruptures are occurring in the barrier between our world and the next. That's what's causing, well, all of this. The problem is, we still don't know why. We gotta see another rift in action. I'm reading one nearby. Maybe check it out? Right, so another thing to compliment here is you'll notice that the three separate pockets of story here we can do in any order. You can actually walk in from the north and not the south and you do the jungle anomaly first. So the way it's written is that they can all exist like in a vacuum. Even if you somehow get to the question mark, question mark, question mark one first, which you kind of have to go through the others. I wonder if the devs are suggesting something there, because this is the most extraordinary one, and it's sandwiched between time, space... Sorry, time and space, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying, anyway. Yeah, um... It's kind of nice that, you know, that all works out. It doesn't matter which one you did first or last. Uh, just a nice thing to see behind the, the, the scenes. And now, yeah, we've got to go stop a branded invasion. Um coming from one of the disturbances. Uh, which the brand have not had anything to do with these three, as you can see. Uh, but we do need to remember the main threat is obviously old Krauki. So, we go. Here's the branded village, by the way, which we will return to soon. This is the one that was mentioned at the end of the first instance that I said I totally glossed over and didn't, like, remember or think about much. This little area of the map's beautiful as well. I love these trees. Feels very good as money here. Oh, Ben Lubar, I sent you the translated book cover on Discord. Did you? Let's have a look here. Sorry, I'm on Discord, so I'm dying in game. I probably got this wrong, but here's what the book cover says. It's Ascalonian script. Ah! Oh! Now, if it's Ascalonian script, that could work. There could totally be an Ascalonian book in or. It's not new, is it, though, for the patch? They must have used it from elsewhere. That's why, because Ascalonian looks very similar to New Crayon. So, he seems to think it is semi-final homeworld of Ascalon, Simon. Uh, okay, I think what you are, um, Simon's history of Ascalon was a thing in Guild Wars 1. So, I think you've mistranslated it, but you've got it close enough that we can figure it out. Uh, what it is. Simon's History of Ascalon is probably what it, what it is. Um, unless I'm wrong there as well about that. You've just reminded, by the way, um, uh, that, uh, there's some fan art on Twitter I really want to show people. I'll do that in a minute, I think. Wonder if those streams are not from space, but from the mist. Maybe that's where the mushroom enemies came from. Uh, mushrooms came from the mists. Hey, that's a funny idea. Yeah, they could have put mushroom monsters in there, but they didn't in the end, did they? They could have, like, retexted or recolored them. I think the idea why they didn't is because they didn't want people to think of those mushrooms as anything to do with Tyrion at all. So if you put Tyrion monsters there, mushroom monsters there, it wouldn't have worked anymore. Good to see that guy on a Rota Beetle. I always get so happy when I see Rota Beetles around because a lot of people don't use them. 
But they are really, really, really uh, good for transportation. So, depending on what rifts are actually up on the map at the moment, will change where the story wants us to go. Which is also really good. So, it's not like one static place. This is the personal story tying very deeply in to um, the current state of dynamic events on this map. And I can't imagine what kind of a headache that would be for the devs there. Here, this... Wait, you see this tornado is? This is exactly the first one I ever saw. Right here in this choke. I'll try and go around it. It's such a cool release, man. Because did, we, we didn't just get the death-branded Shatterer Metal. We also got the giant tornado. I could easily have imagined that giant tornado, if this was another release, that would be the only, like, big prominent new creature we get. But no, no, no. We got two, basically. Come back up to this beautiful area. Most beautiful area of Living Worlds so far. Season 4. Roller Beetle's really good in Jahai. Yeah, I can imagine, man. I really can. I, I don't have to imagine. I usually use it. I don't know why I'm wrapped here. I'm going a bit slower, I think, is the idea. So I can look at chat, because you've got to actually really focus when you're driving around on a, a, a beetle. So there is a disturbance up here. We're just trying to get there before the other players on the map close it. There's a commander. And I also want the waypoint here at the entrance to the Sun's Refuge. So that's Venter Pass. Okay, time limit. Fuck, we missed it. Damn. <sighs> A new one has been detected. So where do we go now? All the way over here. Damn, 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 damn. And, uh, okay, uh, we do have the Pack Vanguard. This one's close. Best release ever? I mean, yeah, I, 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 that's what we were talking about Can't yesterday. I and I know it sounds so like wins. there's no objective or, uh, objectivity there when we say stuff oh, like that. But it is a really good release, isn't it? You're pretty sure it's not the Guild Wars 1 book title. Okay. Um, I don't want to go through the garrison. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sand wolf here. I'm gonna uh, get the mount add-on and stuff back soon. I'm gonna follow that guide that guy put on Reddit. The jackal portals are really annoying. I don't remember them being this annoying back at POF's release, but they always trigger on like the third or fourth port. I know that I was doing some reverse through the portal there. It's another layer of fiddliness. Uh, it's a very good release. There's just so much stuff packed into it for the most part. All is good. Yeah, and even the sigil of nullification non-traversy is just there to get people to use up tomes of knowledge. How much do they cost at the moment? If they go to like 100 gold each, I will use my tomes. To start selling them. 100%. Alright, so we zoom the camera out. This is another snowy one. This will actually be the first test of... So double tap it on dagger. There's no point to ever really double earth because all it's given me is magnetic leap, which frankly, let's be real. So there's the steam explosion mix. Don't really remember how good that is. Don't remember how good that is either. What's earth and water? Oh, that's mud slide, right? Cooldowns aren't back here. Plasma bar blast didn't seem like a good amount of damage. We can use our uh, Azuric skill in a second. Okay, float them all. Double tapping air is fine because we get the CC. Sure. Oh, dagger, dagger is probably much better, so I can get the fire grabs and stuff back. Mudslide, I can't imagine that interesting in PVE. PVP, I've been curious about it, especially since they buffed it. Uh, hopefully, the game's not too loud here, guys. You didn't like this bit of the story? In, in what way? What what bit of the story? What that you had to close a single rift? You know, I'm doing an AFC video right now, right? I'm rendering as I play. Um, and, uh, oh, what is this mechanic? And one of the, the community comments, you're going to hear my frustration in the video, right? Basically, uh, 
they say, oh, there's a point of interest that I need to do a dynamic event to get. Can you stop punishing me for that? Seriously, can you stop punishing me for not being there at the right time? And I get so annoyed. But, uh, you know, because it's people that are just looking for any excuse to just play as little as possible. What's wrong with doing a dynamic event? What's, why is the only legitimate gameplay world completion? Because you've determined that's the narrow little fucking slice you want to play. It winds me up so much. It's so important that people interface with the whole game. Uh, and this guy's just like, no, oh, you're punishing me. And you read the comment, all these little words that are in there just to make it sound like it's so much worse than it actually is. Like the game is for some reason a chore to him to have to actually go and play a dynamic event. Uh, and the worst thing is, the devs come in and say, oh, we'll change it for you. Next patch, we'll move the POI. It's like, stop bowing to these people. Stop doing this. You destroy your own game by, like, thinking that this is worthwhile feedback. It's just mind-blowing. But, hey, it's the world we're in. So, reading Nets Legacy. No, it's got nothing to do with a bug, Dan. If you, when you read the thing on the FC, it's got nothing to do with a bug. Bugs are another thing, and the solution is to fix the bug, not to move the POI. I kind of want to try Scepter as well. I haven't tried um, Scepter in a PvE on a fresh air for ages. Nor Staff, but Staff's pretty boring. So when we kill this Rift Stalker, I think we'll be good. We can double tap that, right? And that we can do for break bar damage. Dodge out of that because that could be dangerous. We're not really dying, which is all right. The swell and winds up. There's no reason to double tap that, right? So let's mud slide. So can I mud slide into the steam blast? Is that like two back to back? I wonder. I can't wait to see this mini balance patch tomorrow. It's going to be so exciting to see what the devs do. I really hope to see more dagger changes. They call it mini, but I'm hoping for something good. I mean, I'm going to doom myself there. It's not going to be anything good, is it? But uh, yeah, it could be good. Especially now that I'm playing a little bit more PvP. I'm like super into uh, what builds and meta shifts there might be. There you go. We can break the bar with the Comet there as well. Got 13k there from the... Uh... I shouldn't have detonated that aura. There was no reason for that. No, and I missed the dodge. It's our first going down. How does this stab feel, I wonder? All right, there we go. We gathered enough data from this... Incident to confirm the brand that originated from those watchers. Which we already know leads straight to the mists. That would mean, um. Yeah, Kral Katorik is inside the mists. Sparks? How is this possible? Elder dragons have never been able to. Guys, I need you over here now. We got survivors. A whole group of them. Wait, in that branded village? How? Commander, you've got to check it out. Big house on the north side. I'll be waiting. Um, so someone said, uh, Weegee said, have you and Boots talked about doing your Elite specula Speculation series again? Love those videos. Yes, for a long, long, long time. Uh, we've been prepping and ready to bring it back. Uh, here is the last month, though, for you. Boots and I always record on Tuesdays. And, um, and we do that because... That's when all the big patches come. So if there's a balance release, we can cover it right. There's no point. Balance with Boots is a bad series if you take like a week to get it out. But if we can do it on the first day, it's really good. So we record on Tuesdays um, uh, for that and for other things as well. When like little current events and cat collecting and stuff like that comes in the game. That's also beneficial to us. Uh, so here was the last. So we decided we, we finished everything up. We got caught up. We're not going to do the gardening episode in the end, I don't think, because... I've been accidentally getting quite a lot of the seeds anyway. Um, I don't know. I, I can't remember where it is in the uh, achievements. But I've got like 50% of the seeds, so it'd just be weird. Uh, I do like the gardening thing, but we're not going to do that. Uh, we did the designer weapon stuff. We did all the stuff. And all the way through that, we've been preparing for Elite Speculation to come back. But um, uh, let's see. Uh, about a month ago, it was Tuesday, and the devs released the trailer for a star to guide us. So I have to cover the trailer instead, so we don't record there. 
then it was release day and I did a 12 hour stream um, right there on that Tuesday. We can't do elite speculation there. Then this most recent Tuesday, we did the adventure episode, uh, which is over on his channel right now. And you guys should totally check out. It's a video with me and Boots on his channel. It's very good. Uh, it's in the Jahai Bluffs on this map. It's us doing this adventure. He is number one in the entire game on that adventure. All right. And he's doing a video showing with me how to get gold and how it all works and all that stuff. So really brilliant. I'm trying to look through my YouTube tabs right now to link it to you all. But all I've got is just Deep Space Nine stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, and um, we did that last Tuesday. Now, this Tuesday, we have a balance uh, thing. And I don't know. Boots is really keen to do elite speculation. But I don't want to do two hour, hour and a half long videos back to back. Because I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with burnout and stuff at the moment. So I'm going to have to find a way to maybe let him down and not do elite speculation on Tuesday. Or we might grind through it and I'll hate myself. But. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, it's just been... You know, the, when the you got to understand. People say this about the LP. People, uh, there was a thing about the audiobooks in the week. When the devs release this new content... I, I don't have like an army of people working with me. So if the devs release a new patch, I've got to cover the new patch. And we have to put things on hold, yeah? You don't get everything. So, but Elite Speculation is a very, you know, that's a perfectly fine, innocent question you're asking there. And we want to bring it back. We will. It's just been a busy month. You know how Guild Wars goes. It's like there's a ton to talk about and then there'll be nothing to talk about for like two months. There'll be like two dead months for us to do a number of different things. So, uh, yeah, we just pace out. There you are, Commander. Hey, you want to repeat what you told me? Um, okay, so we can go to this guy, press F. I like this little moment where we get to actually interact a bit. There's not just these huge blocks of dialogue we get to actually step forward. We saw that dragonfly overhead. The one who's been helping people? Next thing we knew, the sky tore open, and then our home was gone. But how did you survive? The entire village is branded. We were in here when it happened. It didn't reach us. You make heads or tails of this, Tommy? Blish? No, not unless, of course, the mountainside. The brand can't penetrate that much bedrock. Okay, we need to take everyone somewhere, deep underground or something, so we can form a plan. Somewhere like, uh... Hey, give me that thing. What? How does this even work? Hello, Commander. I know a place. Old Sunspear Sanctuary from long ago. Probably been abandoned for years. For years! Yes! Commander, can you meet him there? Ram 2. We'll keep looking for Aureen. And then... Uh, we figure out how to fix this mess. So, there you go. That's the second part. This is weird, the way that this works. I seem to remember... Wasn't there a thing where we're meant to defend this place? <laughs> Or, like, fight before we come and find the survivors? It was like that was just kind of cut out or something. Why do I remember doing something? Maybe I just did because it was fun before. Maybe it was this exact dynamic event here. Um, but, yeah, so they demonstrate that the brand doesn't actually go that deep underground. And I have to admit, when I got to this part of the story, I was, like, squinting my eyes a bit and thinking, is that true? And I was, like, thinking through all the old maps. But if you think about it, we haven't seen the brand go deep underground anywhere, have we? I mean, there's the branded mine that is pretty decisively branded despite being kind of underground, but nothing too major. Uh, the devs maybe could have had, you know, this tunnel a bit deeper to go through so much bedrock, maybe. But uh, yeah, they, they, they survive. And, and that's just kind of a, a very loose thing of like, okay, here you go. Now we're going to go to the Sun's Business Sanctuary. They basically could have cut out the entire thing about this branded village from the patch. And just had at the end of the whatever the last disturbance is, Koss just jumps in and says, Hey, I know how to keep us safe. I love the thought that wherever Timey is right now, she's just got Koss like hanging around near her. And you can actually see, if you really scrutinize that, what where is Timey at the moment? What what are they doing? Who's with her? And it's a bit weird to think about, but they as soon as you actually start scrutinizing that, they've just invented something that fixes that forevermore. The sun's refuge. We have a, 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 a solid recurring base of operations now where we can have any number of characters that all can communicate with us. And the, the presumption is that they're there. With Heart of Thorns, there was kind of the Ratanovus lab and to a lesser extent the egg chamber at Tarir as well. These were kind of our two hubs. Uh, well, now we get our new one, you know, for this. 
Uh, well, they call it a scar rather than a wound. Yeah, that's a cool idea. Yeah, and I mean, it, it makes sense that there's some limitations to the brand, obviously. Um, so yeah, pretty simple stuff. Oh no, I forgot to read the law book before, didn't I? There was a book about stars and constellations in the, um, uh, the otherworldly anomaly. But it's nothing I don't think that we couldn't have read in the library in episode one. Which is something I wanted to note and ask you guys in chat. Here's uh, another one, the very hungry Doliac. It ate and ate and ate and gained a heap of Doliac weight. Doliacs are tender when round and fat. Every Elonian Hydra agrees with that. When the caravan was ready to go, the very full Doliac went much too slow. And got eaten by a Hydra. I love this guy sitting in the chair, man. This is awesome. We've got quite a collection of people here for what is essentially just <laughs> nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I love the thought of Koss using that the, the machine as well. Um, he'd be kind of creepy, to be honest. Overbearing and all not undeady, like muscling in towards you. Mm -hmm. These are all books for children. Uh, yeah, there's loads about Choya growing Choya and stuff in this map as well, aren't there? <laughs> Which uh, I don't really have any strong opinions on because I'm not sure I fully understand what the devs are going for with them. They're just a bit of flavor, right? A siege hydra. Uh, there are also discussions about the weight of the crystals. Are they really that heavy? Oh, you mean like that it could collapse in places underground? Um, so you, you, you find safety hiding beneath the brand and, and the cavern gets collapsed in or something. It's really interesting actually to realize that back at core in 2012, they told no stories about people seeking refuge underground. You know, like look at the, or the Almora story, the origin of the vigil story. Um, you know, a, a pretty tangible, reasonable, obvious way to do that is that, you know, they were, she survived, not because she was on the edge of the brand, but maybe because she managed to get undercover. Um, and she wasn't transformed because she was undercover. Uh, that, that might have made more sense, been more plausible even. Uh, but, you know, nowhere in Core do they actually talk about that anywhere, as far as I remember. So, um, yeah. Hey, KC, it's good to see you, man. I still haven't been back to lurk on any of the uh, the WoW streams. I did see a very angry, very long post on the World of Warcraft subreddit yesterday, though. Or maybe two days ago. Which was like a carbon copy of the kind of whining that the Guild Wars 2 community does. Where they were going on about community and how the devs look down... The Blizzard looks down their nose at World of Warcraft players and all this crap. I was like, yeah, all MMOs seem to struggle with that. <laughs> it was kind of hilarious. It basically seemed to amount to the player, the OP of the thread and the player base agreeing with it. Were unhappy that when they put forward ideas, they weren't getting implemented, I think. is essentially what it came down to. It's just this whole thing that the player base knows better than the devs. Right, guys? Why is game designer even a job? It's easy. All you have to do is play the game to be able to offer the ultimate advice that they must listen to. Look at the crystals on top of the sun's refuge. They're huge. Surely they would weigh many tons, but the caves below seem to have no problem holding them up. Well, you can just go put that down to core mirror, really, can't you? All right, legacy. Let's go on in. You keep this stream online while doing other stuff, kind of like a po podcast? I'm glad, man. Great grandson. With a few extra greats. I see. Commander, you okay? Kralkatorik is in the mists. Chunks of another reality are bleeding into ours. We have to fix this, Bram. Hey, we will. We always do. Let's get this place ready to welcome the survivors. Then we'll handle the bigger problem. Oh, I geeked out so much at this. Old command post. The devs actually recognized that the refuge and the command post were different. Side, Commander? I'll throw the torch to give you a little light. Don't we need one over here? I brought a spare. The Order of Shadows always comes prepared. Oh my god. Okay, I love the ambience of this instance. I, I really, really, really do. Uh, so here, they do a kind of tacky... Oh! Like, uh, I can tell what the writers are thinking right now. They're not sure what kind of relationship Koss and Kossan should have. Right? So the devs have decided, okay, we want it to be like a father-son relationship. So then they've decided, well, how do we telegraph that to our audience? Oh! 
So then they have that line. Oh, it's kind of like a great, great, great grandson. And I don't I like that. Can't they just be like acquaintances? Why do we have to do like this fatherly thing? Ugh. And also shoving it in my face like that. Anyway, um, yeah, we don't want to fall in the pit. We want to use our sexy raptor with our mastery, by the way. Mastery is required to get across. What a dirty experience, Gate. I can't believe they're still doing that. Did they not listen to my complaining when Heart of Thorns came out? I think I'll go make a Reddit thread about this. Uh, yeah, so we go across. We can hit the drawbridge. This lever doesn't budge. Centuries of disuse have caused it to stick. Nothing a good kick won't fix. No, nobody's been here in a long time. Not since I left it, probably. I love that little hint there as to uh, who the last one there might have been. And it was Koss. Honestly, ah, oh, it's so good. It's so dark and echoey. And, you know, I get that tense feeling in my stomach a little bit. Like, oh my god, it's, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. Oh shit, this is cool. And then you see the big buildings from Almost the command there. post. The brand in a number on this place. But the inner chamber should be safe enough. We can Lucky. use it as a base from which to form our battle plan. Figure out how to clean up that Elder Dragon's mess. Commander, we finally found Aureen. She... she fell out of the sky over Gandara. Fell out of the sky? She's fine, but she needs to rest. We're on our way to the sanctuary now with a few civilians. Then we better get this place ready for her. We need to activate Cormier's fire. Activate what? Her final gift to us. Used her magic to keep the area safe. I love the colors here. I mean, it's nighttime in game as well, so you're kind of getting a different experience, I think, right now than if it was day. I don't think it's always this dark. You hear the subtle storms and shit in the background? Look how good that is. Or listen to how good that is. So here we have the wall. This will not actually come down this patch. But later I think we'll go to the Marga Coast to do that. Mark my words, people. Either that or the Venta Cemetery proper and stuff. And a Chirai's Procession. The Marga Coast might be a different one. But look. Oh, and listen, look at the scale. Don't let anyone tell you that they're still struggling with the scale. Because the scale is awesome. This is like 20 times bigger than it was in Guild Wars 1. Just to preserve that same feeling of it being a big area. Um... So we've got to find the entrance to the inner chamber. I th think it's just straight here. So it's weird that they have this big circle here. Spider webs. Because the problem with this place is it's too cheery. Good thing I brought the right gear. Corn and tar. Burns a little hotter. Just give me the word. Um, let me just see, by the way. I think when you walk in, you should find, like, griffins looking at you or owls perched on the, the tents and stuff. It's really nice, the detail they do with the ambient critters and stuff. Anyway, yeah, so spider webs. Go ahead. Each time they let us press F, it's good. So here, the divine fire. So there's tons of spiders. Uh, and again, this, remember, in season two, we go into the dark cave and we find out divine fire can spiders, resist dragons. That's essentially what they're nodding back at here. Spiders. They weren't branded. What did I tell you? Inner chamber is safe. Yeah, so just regular spiders. And this is it, the sun's refuge. We get the buff here, tar-fueled torchlight. Ah, behold, the chamber of the sun. Ah, looks like the current residence redecorated. What matters is that it's safe from Kraukatorik. If my history lesson was correct, lighting these fires will activate Kormir's protection spell. Let me know when you're ready. And you might want to stand back or something. It hasn't been lit in a while. Light it. Isn't the outer ring lighting? 
Webs must be blocking the fire. Uh, what was that? Damn it. Whatever it was caused a cave-in. We're trapped. Kind of sounded like... Oh, come on! So spiders, boon of darkness. Spiders do more damage while in the darkness. The effect goes away when they come into life. So there's going to be a ton of mechanics here we're not really going to see because we're playing with five people. Yeah, you guys were asking about the boss, like what it does in multiplayer. Uh, it picks everyone up, so that we, we will see it in a second. It's a really cool little engagement here, though. We defeat the spiders, and then when the boss comes, you guys will see its special gimmick. And I really do Why like its gimmick. Why little things just keep coming? We'll and keep these busy. You check on the other braziers. Unless Bram wants to sit this one out. Me? Don't be ridiculous. I could stop them all dead in ten minutes flat. Ten whole minutes. Leisurely pace. Seven. Seven minutes. Ah, now you're talking. Kassan, my boy, let's show them this family can hold our own. So those two fight uh, and we get to move on. The, uh, there is actually an achievement to do it in seven minutes, which I got because I was playing co-op. I don't know how hard that is in single player. Um, but seven minutes is actually quite a long time for a single boss fight, to be honest. Uh, so it, it really does feel like quite oh, the grueling good. one. More webs. Uh, and now there's egg sacks. So you can break the sacks if this, this ring, when it fills up, the, the, uh, the eggs will hatch. That wasn't so bad. Still okay over there. Uh, three more minutes. You're fine, Bram. Keep fighting. <laughs> Not a chance. So what they're doing here is a whole new th side of Bram. Where he, he he where we see his arachnophobia or whatever, and I think this is just to make him look a bit weaker, a bit more sympathetic, a bit less. You know, it's basically softening our anger to to him. This patch will do everything it can to get us to that point where we chill with him again. Um, you get a special action to chill him out and calm him down, which you just saw I used, and then you get to fight the boss. Every 25%, the boss will do this. It picks us up. It literally eats us. Watch, watch, watch. If I try and run away, it grabs me. And once it's grabbed everyone, it, I mean, how cool is this tech? Honestly. And so to break out, you've got to, like, get the skills. Uh, and then you can sort of claw your way out. And then you're in a new area of the map and you do it again. I really want to see them utilize this in a raid or a fractal or something. It's so cool. And uh, we just immediately chunked him down 25% again. And, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I really do like the fight. I think it's very, very cool. It's not to break out, it's to prevent damage. Right, yeah, he's constantly eating you and digesting you. Focus on the webs. Don't let him near me. Okay. <clears throat> I wish I was Tempest right now. It feels so much better with the overloads. All right, so I'm going to flee again. You won't get me, Spider-Man. No. No. <laughs> I think you can't flee because if you go into the darkness, um, so obviously we don't know. I like this struggle mechanic here as well. They should use this more. You and I would be standing over that thing's corpse by now. <laughs> I like how Koss and Kosan are just totally judging us as well as to what exactly uh, we're doing. So you go another twenty-five percent damage. You're not going to really see the fight. Can you obviously fetch to not get eaten? No, you can't. It's not a stability thing. Don't it's let them near me. Which is good, really. You shouldn't be seeking to break that, I don't think. It's not really the spirit of what the fight is. Yeah, the struggle mechanic should, I think, just be like what they do as a standard for a struggle mechanic now and stop reinventing the wheel now, and then they can just utilize that and filter that in through all other places. I was disappointed once again to see another Living World patch where they're not utilizing the old stuff they have implemented. You know, all those skills we got from the, the robot arm last release and all that shit. None of that's here again. Oh, here he grabbed me from range. Um, so, you know, they're still not being very efficient about it, but it's very, very cool fight. You truly are a Dejari. But someone's enjoying this. She snuffed out the fire. We'll have to take her down. 
We probably missed some dialogue there. You're fine, Bram. Keep fighting. You can do this, Bram. Oh, seven minutes. Didn't think you'd pull it off. Just glad it's over. Bram, I didn't know you're... I'm not. That's just... Rox always takes care of the spiders. I think we can relight Cormier's fires now. Commander, do the honors? You'll need this. Catch. I love how they throw that to us. That's just like the rose thing, and we get to light it. Yeah, I know that the mechanic kind of does exist with the tornadoes in Deep Stone. Um, Rendering completed. But I think it could be used even further. Oh, the render's done. That's uh, the AFC. There. This place has a new purpose. Feels like it needs a new name. I hereby declare thee Sun's Refuge. Perfect. I hope your friends will be able to... structure bioluminescent traces this lair houses a lubinella cadentis they were supposed to be extinct they are now <laughs> not that i don't like being safe in here but um how are we gonna stop the crazy outside all right i mean this is great look at the cast look at how many different things we interact with here goric is awesome by the way look at this this is what i'm talking about with quality watch how each individual npc they're not all just walking on a set path. They do things that, like, would fit their character. He actually analyzes the, the, the insects and stuff in the area. Um, these guys come forwards. Some Morden Crescents, some Sun Spears. Raptor's presence in the midst is destabilizing the border between our world and the next. So what does that actually mean? I don't want to sound alarmist, but reality might. This is an agreement. Well, what does that mean? Wait, you know what? Never mind. I don't want to know. Why is Krupp doing this? What's he after? That villager said something that stuck with me. Right before the rifts appeared, they saw Aurene. The same thing happened in Jahai. The Shatterer attacked after Aurene paid us a visit. Wait. The data I have on the mist rifts... Give me a second. That's it. Krakatorix attacks... They're all places Aurene was at first. She's the connection! That crystal monster. He's hunting her. Aurene should be safe as long as she stays in the chamber. But these walls are old. We need to fortify. Good idea. We can't afford any surprises. Outside! Branded everywhere! They found us! Let's move! We'll protect Aurene. Go! I don't even remember this bit. What? I, I genuinely don't remember defending here. I thought we were just at the end. All right. Uh, so, yeah, we move on up. What does this lead to? I can't really can't remember. Back towards the command post. Oh, no, I remember. Obviously, I re yeah, yeah, no, I remember. I remember. Zaim, get the civilians to safety. Grab Let's shut that rift. Break behind you. Okay, so we get a rift. You know, standard situation like before. This is... You remember I said that the patch could have been half as long as it was? This is... What, what about to happen? What is about to happen is so extreme. I can imagine this is the end of the patch. Stay alert! We've got a rift stalker on our tail! Mother... Stalker Bram, we have to take it down. All right. So we get the uh, branded Rift Stalker. Unfortunately, this boss is exactly the same as in the open world. I mean, I can't go from one place saying that, oh, they shouldn't keep reinventing the wheel. Really, Snap? 
It's been years since I've seen this much excitement. Just let me have this. To then upset that they do the same boss. So it's kind of whatever. But look, snap and air. So it's going to be really hard for me to talk here because they talk a lot during the fight and I don't want to sort of interrupt it too much. But snap and air come out of the mist. I, my eyes were glued to snap. Watch it. I. Sorry. You're better than this. Focus. Look at how insecure and scared he is around his mum. Uh, and you'll notice immediately she is different. She she knows about Rift Stalker and stuff, which she didn't in life. So she's continued learning. Uh, we're going to break more of these pods. Oh, there's no break bar. We've almost got it. You keep fighting, D. You never change, do you? Taken care of. Listen to his voice! Uh, you're, you're Snap! You wrote my textbook on comparative golematic theory! Mother, I can't believe. You're. you're dead? How is this possible? You're asking the wrong Norn. Look, we can't stay in this world for long. Glid sent us with a message for Orin. Alcatoric has begun to consume the magical energy inside the mists. Just like he consumed Balthazar's magic. That explains all the chaos out there. If allowed to continue unabated, he will devour reality itself. Lish was right. Orin is inside. This way. Come on, Snaf is way more exciting than air. I mean, air is great. But... I... I don't... Can we talk? Graham, we don't have a lot of time. And talking was never our strong suit anyway. What's done is done. I wasn't what you needed. I know that. I'm sorry. But I had to be true to myself. I had to follow my legend. I didn't want to leave you behind. Believe me. I knew the cost. But if I'd stayed... What good to you would I have been? I'm not asking to change the past. I just... Seeing you now... Is it really too late for us? Yes, Bram. It's too late. I'm dead. And anyway, I could never have been the family you needed. Don't you see? You have that family. These people love you. They will grow your legend. If you'll just stop trying to drive them away. But... And yet they're still here. Look at that. Let me go, son. Live your life. Mr. Snap? Sir? Um, can I pick your brain about concave versus convex reflectors in Surveyor Golem visual sensors? You're quite precocious, aren't you? What did you say your name was? Timey, sir? Ah, soldier's apprentice. That explains it. Uh, explains what? Oh, I've heard great things. <laughs> hey, Aureen. How are you feeling? Aureen, I need you to listen carefully. Your mother sent us. Clint is doing everything she can to hold off Kalkatark. But she won't win! She needs you! It's time for you to fulfill Glint's legacy. Wait, what does that mean? Aurene must kill Kralkatorik and replace him as Elder Dragon. Now! No! She can't face Kralkatorik alone. She isn't ready. Not alone, Commander. Your fate is entwined with hers. The prophecy hinges on you both. You must take him down together. And do not tarry. The more you wait, the more powerful Krakatoric will become. What, you expect them to take down a walking hurricane by themselves? Orin's still a kid! Stop it! You're scaring her! This is why you were brought together. Last failed, because he didn't have a champion, Commander. He didn't have you. Then I'm going too. 
They're not doing this alone. They're not doing it at all! Maureen, look at me! Defeat Krakatoric and take his place! It's what you were born to do! Arena's had a premonition, a vision of the future, of multiple futures. The outcome is always the same, no matter what we do. Aurene dies. We just came from outside. Aurene broke straight through the branded crystal. She's... she's gone. Oh gods, not even the dragon will face Krokotoric. What are we going to do? We have no way to know when he's coming. Please. Everyone, calm down. Calm down? Uh, you saw what it's like out there? Vormir, hear my prayer. Actually, I think I can... He comes out of nowhere. I don't want to die. We already lost a whole village. I have an idea. We, we could... have to fight back. It's no use. We'll never see him coming. Everyone, Blish has something to say. You're frightened, and you have every right to be. But we need to be strong for each other. We need to stay calm. How are we supposed to stay calm when an Elder Dragon could attack at any moment? Luckily, handling dragons is what the pack does best. The Commander and I have a plan to keep you safe. What is it then? What's the plan? Patience. If anyone can think his way out of this, it's Blish. He can do anything. Inaccurate, but thank you. I believe I can create a device that will warn us when Kral Kator is coming. And we're going to begin working on it immediately. Right, Commander? Yes? Uh... Yes. Of course. Lead the way. I'll send word to the remaining Sunspears, Commander. They should join us here soon. Are we supposed to just... trust him? A golem? What if we have to leave again? Oh my god. Uh, what, what, what am I supposed to do with that? How, what, there's too much to talk about and geek out. There's too much. Like, legitimately too much. I guess I have to gloss through it really quickly. I mean, it's crazy. Look, look at the back-to-back -back how much fucking dialogue and shit there is there, which is amazing and super cool. But for the purposes of talking about what I think about it all, it's really, really tricky. Um, so, uh, yeah, Bram and Air. I already talked about the Air scene, so it's really cool that they get that... that that conclusion there those two exit very quickly as well obviously uh the, the pandora's box that i was talking about earlier on the stream that being open the idea that these characters are still around glint is still around there's an idea of a new prophecy there that they're actually saying glint uh Aureen would be fulfilling glint's legacy is itself a prophecy right the, the, and there's that side of things um but the conclusion of bram and air you know she focuses on family which is very wolfy she nods to the fact that they hardly even fucking spoke in the past before so don't get so upset about it she's very very independent. She might actually look like a bit of a bad mother, to be honest, to some of you guys. But she's so normal in that conversation. She's really independent about things, and that's what I really value about her there. Uh, it's just a good scene, and, um, you know, I think it really rounds uh, Bram out. We'll see a bit more of the Bram thing towards the end of the patch. Uh, what else? So we come here, we get the Doctor Strange cutscene. Yeah, flashing lights, seizure modes. It's uh, pretty uh, exciting. Uh, Aureen smashes off and flies off. We don't really get the animation, but her breaking through the crystals. You get glimpses of those little characters. We could even do a frame by frame of that. Uh, and all these guys, I love this scene as well. Gorik chimes in at the right time to defend his brother. Blish actually comes and stands on this. Uh, even just the dialogue timing of him saying, um, 
uh, excuse me, while everyone's despairing, and then excuse me again, and ArenaNet knows we, the player, have noticed Blish doing that. And then they very naturally have the commander interrupt and talk about it because they're confident knowing that we've seen that Blish is trying to talk. Like, you know, they respect our perception there. And I really like that too. Uh, I love the line as well from Bram. Talk he literally compares Kraukatoric to a hurricane in game. I thought that was great and a really nice little knowing nod there as well. Quite delicately done. I like that Farron came in here yeah. and had some actual dialogue. Um, I love the despair of the people. Not even the dragon will save us. I thought that line was immediately. That just is so well done, right? Like every little bit. Um... Yeah, I know it's just list th strength after strength after strength, but I just think it flows really well. I saw someone in chat saying, I don't like how hard they're pushing Orin. What kind of fucking mountain do you live under, mate? The game's been about Orin for ages. If you, What do you mean you don't like that they're pushing Orin? To abandon Orin at this point is, is not an option. The entire fucking thing is all about Orin and has been for ages. If that sits uneasy, Evie if uneasy with you a cutscene like this and a moment like this is not to raise that point it was ages ago uh it's it's not it's not of any worth to say that at all you don't like that it's like saying uh i don't like this fps game has guns at this point Do you know what i mean um but anyway so yeah it's um it, it blew me away I, I liked all of it honestly i really did oh you don't they didn't like aureen pushing the, the characters pushing aureen that's fair, yeah, the idea that they're all pushing. And that was a good moment as well, that we have Snaff and Air, Snaff and Air, speaking on behalf of Glyn, saying, yo, Aureen, you've got to do this now. And we say no. We're like, no, our bitches, shut up. This is my dragon. And we say no. I think that's really cool just to see us step in and cut across them and say, no, do you know what? Uh, this is not all for you to d determine. And there's that beautiful sense there as well that Aureen is like empathetically attuned to us and understands the confusion and the different opinions that people have. So she pursues it. She thinks about it. And, you know, we all have that vision, that shared vision there as well, that shared prophecy of Aureen's. And yeah, that also suggestion there, the little dialogue, the line that basically we are the champion, you know, um, uh, as the death branded shatterer is Kraukatorix, we are, we, you know, we are a shatterer. It's kind of a cool thought, you know. We are a shadow of the dragon. All right, so hey, Blish. You really have a plan? Not yet, but widespread panic had to be averted. However, I have the beginning of one. This aside, our most pressing problem is that we don't know when or where Kraukatork will appear. But if we were to enter the mist and affix a tracking device to him, I can create an algorithm to predict his movement. And use it as an early warning system. Evacuate settlements he's headed toward. But how do we pull this off? Leave the device to me. A Boonian lure. Magic tasty enough to tempt a dragon. Something like... Ah! Alcazar's sword! There might be a problem with that. I know. The sword was lost when you killed Balthazar. It may not even exist anymore. But word is, the Priory is currently surveying the battle site. If anyone can find that sword, it's them. Shall we? Oh, okay. So there you go. Legacy complete. Have a good night, Elemis. It's good to see you. Um, and yeah, I like Brit Blish taking this into his own hands. We have our own plan. You know, we figured something out. Balthazar's sword is some really exciting subject material for the second half of the patch as well. Um, and uh, so, yeah, what's he say? Ready to hunt down that sword, Commander? Explain to me why we'd need Balthazar's sword. Our mother used to entice Gorik and me into taking medicine by giving us candy. Same theory here. We need Kralkatoric to ingest the device. Balthazar's sword, and by extension, his tasty magic is the candy. Uh, I like the little, especially in context with what else will happen this patch. It's nice to get a bit more backstory about him and his, you know, growing up and what he was like with his brother. Here we get Bram. Sorry, I need some time to think. Can we talk later? I, I like this moment here too as well, because in a lot of RPGs, when you get dialogue like that, that's the devs as adhering to some formula where they know they have to give every single NPC dialogue. But at this point, they don't want to push that character's story or they don't want to do anything yet, so they just give some filler dialogue instead. But you know that that's not what ArenaNet's doing, because they've only given us very specific characters to speak to here. Koss, for example, isn't one of them. Koss and sorry. So they could have done that with Bram over there, but they let us speak to him just purely for the reason to know that he doesn't want to talk to us. 
you know. Dang it! I should have asked for his autograph. He's a ghost. Can he even hold a pen? I mean, <laughs> he can hold a rifle. Besides, hero worship uh -huh. is unhealthy. Only leads to disappointment. Gorik, we need to talk about letting people have their fun. Uh, so yeah, another little, little cute timey moment to round out the uh, the instance there. And yeah, she's a she geeks out about snap. I geeked out about snap, so I really kind of liked it. Um, so yeah, there you go. And the sun's refuge opens up and begins. Um, there's a lot to talk about here and things to do. Uh, but yeah, so we are going to go deal with Balthazar's Greatsword now at the Sky Gardens of Vabi. Uh, however, for this stream, guys, I'm afraid that is going to be the end. Uh, can I just remind you, there is a series of PvP videos up on WP2 you guys can check out. There's a video over on Boots' channel right now. That's World of Enders. Literally, while I'm speaking, you can open a tab, youtube.com, World of Enders. And I'm in that video uh, in this patch dealing with the adventures. It's a really fun one, and I want to see that, you know, a non-build related thing that I do with him does well. So if you guys go check that out, that will be great. And keep an eye on my channel, because not only is there an AFC video coming, but also a super edit edited by Dark, which I am currently reviewing and watching at the moment, which looks really good too. So lots of content out. Uh, you can just kind of hawk those places for the rest of the night. If you want to know when that stuff actually happens, we have a channel where we do all discussion about all new videos and things I'm in over there on Discord. Uh, you'll get notifications for streams we run giveaways over there there's entry to the guild there's discussion about guild wars general random stuff other games loads of it uh, so if you want to hear me talking more about deep space nine or solaris and stuff there are chat rooms where i use over there and uh yeah so cheers guys i hope you uh, enjoyed another story recap i'll be back um with the next stream on saturday uh where we will continue with this awesome awesome release going back to one of the core path of fire maps Here's the beautiful music again. I've got to change the audio in my videos at the moment. You know, I've really got to do that. Uh, so, yeah, we'll be back here. Hope you guys enjoyed. We've only just started scratching the surface. And I'll see you for the rest of it next time.